All right. So many report our shows as abusive to YouTube or to Facebook, so they will let us go to Facebook. So we're live on YouTube. We're going to go and get this show party started. Oh. Are you saying we're not allowed on Facebook? They said there was an offensive post. Oh. Any of this is so offensive. Writer, educator, advocate for the sacred plan. Tammy Sweet is an energetic and passionate educator. Tammy has a master's degree in endocrinology and has been a practitioner of herbal medicine while teaching anatomy and physiology, focusing on primitive skills and herbal medicine. She is a co-founder of the Heartstone Center for Earth Essentials in New York, where she travels and offers numerous workshops and online courses. Her love, amazement, and wonder of the human body and how it works shines through as she educates in ways students can understand. Tammy combined her expertise in herbal medicine and neurobiology and authored the Holistic Healing Guide to Cannabis which provides a deeper understanding of the science behind cannabis medicine and the body's endocannabinoid system. Tammy studied herbal medicine with Rosemary Gladstar and Pam Montgomery, spirit and earth-based skills and philosophy with Rocchio Alacarn, Brooke Medicine Eagle, and Tom Brown Jr., and has been influenced by many other wonderful herbalists, especially Stephen Bruner. Tune in March 24th at 4.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we sit down with Tammy to discuss the road that led her to cannabis, her passions for teaching, and the plant science our government seems to be ignoring. Zoom live at www.facebook.com forward slash Prohibition Talk Radio and find us on YouTube. All right, all right, guys. We are back for another week. That kind of stalled there at the end. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but nothing but it's always something, right? You know, uh, with all this great technology yeah. becomes all these great headaches that we have to deal with. So nothing's ever easy anymore. Right? So, anyways, guys, I hope you guys like the teaser video. I'm really excited today right, to introduce right. you yeah. all to Tammy Sweet. So this is going to be a fun show. Um, real quick, we're going to say hi to everybody on the team. I want to say hi to Sherry Tuckus from The Green Nurse. Welcome back again. 
Hey everyone, it is so good to be here. Always great to talk about cannabis and the endocannabinoid system and all the topics that surround our favorite plant. We're here to educate and empower people to make choices that are best for them. So thank you for having me on, Joe. Appreciate uh, it. It's awesome to have you guys back on. Uh, the Can Talk segment this week's gonna be a little different. We're gonna throw in a Terp Tuesday from yesterday. Um, the the it was. It's an amazing segment that we're trying to trim down. It ended up being like, what, a half hour at start. So we, we can't obviously play that. So we're going to trim it down. We're going to have some fun with it. We've been working on it all afternoon. So we'll have it ready for you guys tomorrow. So we'll just do a little throwback Thursday to the Can Talk segment this week. And we'll play yesterday's Turp Tuesday, which was a lot of fun. Um, today, Justin C. is not going to be with us. Um, and we don't know where our grower is. Hopefully getting some stuff ready and working on our, our grows. Uh, so it's going to be us today. So and again, I want to say hello to Timothy Fair from Vermont Campus Solutions. Education and empowerment. I just love that message, Sherry. I mean, just how much that just hits the bullseye right there. I love it. Uh, full agreement on that one. Hello, everybody. As always, love to see everybody. All right. Well, I'm really excited today, guys, because we get to hang out with Tammy again. Now, I got to hang out with Tammy a few years ago now when she was out here in Vermont uh, for Rose Glad Stars Medical Conference, which was an absolutely life changing event for me. Um, and one of the things that I was I had a lot of fun with Tammy with was her classes were unbelievable. Like I've never had so much fun learning about my body before and cannabis. And it was just, it was, it was really great. You're a really great educator. And like, it, it, you know, people know you for this. Right. Um, and then, you know, we get to talk about some of your wine and some of your other projects, which actually I still have a bottle here uh, that we've talked about before. <laughs> Me and Shay, we're going to crack this thing open here shortly. Um, we were almost going to make a segment of it actually. So we we're talking about that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you on. You are actually a Vermont native, which we were just discussing before the show as well. So you're from Essex. So it's, it's really kind of, yeah. you know, it's fun to have you here. I um, mean, now in New York, uh, but now your, you know, thing for cannabis is, is a really unique story, right? Um, you've written a book which we're, we've talked about, if you guys have followed the show for the promotions that we're, we're going to be giving away to here later in the show, which I'm really excited for. Um, but you wrote The Holistic Healing Guide to Cannabis, uh, which is really unique. Yeah. Because this is a few years old now, so it's, not, it's nothing that you just wrote yesterday, right? Um, and one of the unique things about it is you've been talking about the endocannabinoid systems for quite a while now, um, which you know a lot yeah. of nurses and the medical systems just kind of catching up to right now, if, you know, if we, we all kind of stand corrected, you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, it's going to be really unique to hear your story. So to start us off, uh, tell us everybody who you are, where you came from, yeah. and really uniquely, how did you get into cannabis and how is this plant serving you right now? Yeah, it's it's a pretty interesting story. But first, thanks for having me on. And that was a really fun video. I, I didn't get to see the video before. <laughs> I just clicked before and saw the picture. I'm like, hey, that's me. So that, <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> So um, it is a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was very fun. Um, so yeah, like we were talking before, um, I was a, a pretty heavy, serious athlete. Well, my whole life and played basketball in college for Gino, uh, his first two years. So I never, um, hung out with cannabis. It wasn't until I think it was my early forties. Uh, and my wife said she got a cookie from a friend whose mom had cancer and was like, you want to try this? And it was also, so that was my first time in my early forties. And I was like, wow, this is, this is, this is like, I've been here before because I would, you know, hiking or going in sweat lodge. I was like, Oh, I've, I've been these places. And then the next year I moved to where we are now and I decided in my kind of Tammy fashion that uh, I, I wanted to know what the big deal, like why people were so, why the law and the powers that be were so afraid of this plant. So I grew one <laughs> and I, someone said, grow it with your tomatoes. So I grew it in the garden and it was a year we had this huge tomato blight. So all the tomatoes died and there was this giant cannabis plant in the garden. I was like, Oh my God. But that moment when I, when she was growing, I really got it. I really understood the power of this plant. And that was the kind of the beginning. And so then from there, I was doing uh, teaching different classes on pain and, uh, 
and I got permission to give this person's name. So I was having horrible, horrible menstrual cramps and I had never had them before. And Aviva Ram was visiting me and she was teaching at our school. And she said, well, here, why don't you try some, you know, go and make some tincture and try cannabis. And it didn't work. My, my uterus was just like, no. So, but it, it sparked an interest to go, well, what, how would it work? When would it work? So I did a, that's when I started doing research. And then I started teaching herbalists. I, I really felt like I wanted to bring this plant that had been pushed to the margins by the herbal world. And I wanted people who knew plants to, to use this plant. So that was the beginning. And so I would, and then I started researching the endocannabinoid system and it was fun because it's cutting edge. It's not taught in medical school. The only plate now it's showing up in books, but when I was learning, I was just reading articles. And um, so one day I was out walking and I was thinking about the lecture that I was gonna give at an herbal conference and literally cannabis was like, and now you're gonna write a book. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I started thinking about it. And a few months later, Story Publishing contacted me and said, hey, we were wondering if you wanted to write a book on cannabis. And I was like, I'm actually, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And that was the beginning of the book. And, um, and it was supposed to, they wanted me to do it in three months. And it took me almost two years <laughs> because I wanted all the science to go with it. I wanted it to be something that like a nurse or a doctor could look at and it would talk to them, but I also wanted it in the hands of list and people who want to be herbalists like that, like it's a, it's a medicine and we, we need to be able to make our own medicine. So I wanted something that just was like, here, this is something for everybody. And I actually had to have like some conversations with story because they were like, I said, I want it, I want to, I want this to be for multiple levels. And they were like, well, we're not sure. And I'm like, Look, this is how I teach. I know you just have to help me write how I teach. And so that's, that's the book. And um, yeah. Well, it's got some pretty, some pretty great claims from some awesome people like Rosemary Gladstars, which is a thing. So obviously, you know, yeah. We, if anybody knows herbalism, we, we, we know who Rosemary is. Um, you get a chance to work with Rosemary, right? And, 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 and get educated, yeah. for her, correct? Yeah, she um, was my first herbal teacher. And she is was the first person that I, you know, called teacher, mm. um, you know, and, and I went to the Women's Herbal Conference and every teacher when they introduced themselves, said, and my teacher, Rosemary. So, and I had gone to the conference the first time to pick a teacher. And I was like, well, I'm going to study with the person who everybody studied with. So I would drive back. I was still living here. So I would drive the six and a half hours home. And I did my apprenticeship with her. I did my advanced herbal apprenticeship. And then she invited me to trade the advanced apprenticeship to teach anatomy to the herbalist and it was her it was rosemary who kind of like birthed me into the herbal world and she yeah she's just <laughs> well, i mean awesome now, she, she's an amazing woman um and that's a really unique yeah. story, right uh because i mean she's also her sage mountain right is 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 probably where you where you were going to correct uh which is a yep. uh, amazingly beautiful beautiful place right um is also in vermont so if i remember yeah. right in the south royalton area um i've been there we've, we've had a remarkable interview with rosemary um and also we attended the yeah. conference which was you know given by rosemary so um an amazing amazing yeah. time um so you know being an athlete right so there's been a lot of news lately about you know athletes and cannabis right so yeah. Let me ask you a quick interjection on your story here is, is, is how do you feel about that? Cause I mean, you, obviously you're an athlete, but you were not consuming at that point. Like you said, you we were, it was later in life. Uh, but how do you feel yeah. about that being, you know, being used by the athletes nowadays? Yeah. I, I, I think that it's a thing, uh, you know, I was at a medical conference at Harvard 
And there was a whole panel of NFL football players, former NFL football players who were lobbying the NFL to be able to get cannabis off the banned substance list. Because if they test positive, they're, they're, they're needing to, t- you know, give urine samples for months, but yet opiates are not on the banned substance. Mm-hmm. And many of them talk about prophylactically using high CBD and high THC cannabis to prevent brain injury. Mm-hmm. So absolutely as a method, if we're going to allow athletes to consume alcohol for recreational purposes, cannabis is no different. And on top of that, it's an excellent pain reliever and it, it's a, it helps prevent brain injury. So I don't, if, if you're going to allow alcohol, <laughs> this is much better for you. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, it's, just, it's just interesting to hear people's take on it because now, like you said, you know, we're starting to see a lot of the major sports franchises get behind cannabis. We've seen baseball, the um, actually change its course on the way they're doing their testing. So then they are now testing for the opioids, like you were saying before. I don't think a lot of people realize that they were not testing for opioids up until this point. Most major franchises are yeah. not. Um, but yeah. cannabis was something that would throw a red flag and get you know athletes suspended um but now we yeah. saw the change in baseball which hopefully we do see the change in the nfl because that'd be huge because again like you know we've, we've seen some reports saying you know with traumatic brain injury we've had a few traumatic brain injury patients on the show uh like nikki lolly who who's found tremendous relief within using cannabis right um and, yeah. and you know I, I can't imagine, you know, me personally, I had a head injury as well. So I use it a lot for my, my issues there. So I can't imagine what it would do for uh, a football player. You know, I'm kind of like you, I, I, I didn't go to UConn and play for Gino or nothing, but you know, I played sports. In high school. <laughs> <laughs> I chose to go, go to culinary school, unfortunately. Um, but um, <laughs> You know, it, it's unique when we talk about health and cannabis. I think one of the things that Sherry talked about in, in their can talk this this week that we unfortunately are, are going to be able to have on until tomorrow, guys, is 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 the impact with sports and, and that whole thing. Like, you know, we're not overweight. The stigma is that we're overweight. We're lazy. Yeah. You know, we're people that do not want to get off the couch. We're just going to pack on pounds where we're, we're really seeing a lot of the reports are quite opposite. They're drastically opposite. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it helps in so many different ways that we could talk about it for a whole show. But if you guys want to turn on, tune in and find out more about it, we'll have for can't talk tomorrow. But anyways, um, <laughs> so, I mean, the book, right? So the holistic healing guide to cannabis, which is you, you've taken a unique approach. And I really like the way, like you said, you, you, you want to make it handy for everybody, you know, be useful to everybody in the medical profession. And then the, the herbal, the herbal community. Now the herbal community, like you said, has been talking about cannabis for a long time, right? Um, one of the things that really threw me for a curve and something I'll never forget. And I actually talked to Sherry and all the nurses about this is, you know, <laughs> when we talked to Rosemary, she was like, you know, we're just witches. Right. Um, but you know, hundred mm-hmm. years ago we were being sacrificed be- because we thought we could heal somebody with a plant you know what i mean and then it's yeah. been kind of like an underground community up until what the last you know 10 or so years right where cannabis has really started to see take the mainstream out west right um yeah. now you know since we realized our endocannabinoid system and there's actually a health function behind this we can you know get this this pushed out um you know it all started on california you know the aids epidemic things like that is when we really got turned on to how cannabis can affect people on a health level um now the book i mean amazing book thank you for writing it i think it's uh, you know like i said everybody that is an herbalist everybody who's a first time even a first time grower to a medical professional really should have a copy of this yeah um i know yeah. <laughs> i know a lot of uh my medical <laughs> professional nurse friends are, are pretty excited to hear from you and talk to you today you know what i mean um so you're at this point in your life, right? Now you're the co-founder of the Heartstone Center for Earth Essentials, right? Um, which you've yep. been there for a little while. You guys do some amazingly awesome things there as well. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So my wife, Chris, and I, when we, we bought this property, we both knew that we wanted to have a school. So we started to cultivate the land and we started an herbal school. 
And like Rosemary, we had to have a yurt. So we have a teaching yurt. Um, and we had this big giant barn that we converted. It evolved, let's say, over time. And so we have the model of one weekend a month for six months. So May through October. And it's weather. You know, we, we cut the edges with the weather. And people come and they stay here Friday to Sunday and they camp or we've got like a little lean to or little sleeping areas. Um, but it's an immersion program for the weekend and we serve food and the people make medicine. We do lectures and, you know, Chris and I teach, but then we also feel like the third teacher is our land and just getting people on the land without their phones, without their car and, you know, we're really focusing on building community with each other and the land and relationship with the plants. And it's like it brought tears to my eyes two years ago to get we have this big medicine wheel garden where there where our herbs are. And two years ago, I got the hemp license and could we had cannabis out in the, the wheel. And so our students would walk by and they got to get to know this plant all year long. And it was so lovely. Um, and so that's our apprenticeship. And then we also have another program called the Journey of the Heart, which is, you know, some of our students call it the summer camp for the soul. Um, but it's a, it's a year long immersion where they come five times over a year through the different seasons. And we just pay attention to, it's not about as much about herbs, but about self and spirit and connection and how to be better humans is, is the way I like to phrase it. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I, that is a part of our land is now that I'm growing hemp, I'll do it one more year. We'll see what the feds have to say about it mm -hmm. in New York state. But um but then I, I teach classes like medicine making, and then we get people to come and help us harvest. And it's just this big fun, like there's not a lot of pressure. I'm not growing thousands of plants. This year I may grow 50. The number keeps going up, but um, you know, I just love getting to hang around with the plant and our land is just spectacular. Mm. So um, this year, we're not going to run our two in-person programs because we just couldn't figure out how to make it safe. Um, so we were just like, all right, we'll just wait another year. We don't want to take it online. You know, it's like, no, we'll just wait. The land is here. We, there's plenty for me to do. Um, so, yeah. And it's, it's just, I think our, we, we started our herb school in 2004. So oh. it's been quite it's a long time. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. been amazing, right? So what are the all right, so yeah. let's go there really quick. What are the biggest things you've seen differently now, right? I mean, you started back this is you know oh four, now we're talking twelve years ago almost, right? Um yep. what's the biggest difference you've seen so far between starting, you know, that, that must have been even then oh four, that must have been kind of a a risky move on on most parts, right? You know, herb school oh, for herbal? Days. Yes. Well, the kind of the nice thing about it is that it's under the radar, right? There's no, um, there's no license to be an herbalist, mm -hmm. you know, so there's no licensing body. So it's, it, it, it just, people just don't notice, you know, and the way that we talk about it is we're teaching you, we're teaching students how to be home herbalists. Cause in, in the traditional method, you learn the plants and the medicine and you practice on yourself and then your family. And then as you get more experience, then you, you know, maybe a neighbor. So we're just giving people knowledge about how to help their family. And then a lot of times they'll go on to a clinical herbalism program because they've gotten the first year done with us. So as far as, you know, I'll knock on wood here, as far as the authorities, no, there's, there's not been any real, worry or issue even from the beginning you know the I, I guess the funny thing is that our neighbors are now used to one weekend a month there are 20 to 30 cars lining our country road and you know <laughs> there might be some drumming happening and singing you know right. <laughs> but um 
And the other big difference is that I think so two years ago, right, is this will be my third year growing hemp. But about five years ago, I had um, a couple plants that were in the briars and <laughs> and you had to walk by them to go down to the yurt. And I was walking behind students and I heard one say, God, it smells like weed. But Timmy wouldn't put it right here. And I walked right up to him and I said, I would and I did. And please stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting, right? Because the laws, like you said, you, you've been in New York for a little while now, right? Um, so you're dealing with New yeah. York State, correct? Um, yeah. So, you know, as, as we know, there's a lot of interesting things going on. But I think we got some good news this week, right? Tim, we'll talk about later. Um, hopefully that pertains to everybody in New York State. But like you said, the FDA, we, you know, a lot, a lot of new things can change here drastically or yeah. hopefully for the better, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> One of the things I love about you is you're a fun educator, right? So you, you have a lot of yeah. background in education, a lot of different things. What's one of your favorite things to talk about? And what's what's one of the, what you believe the most impactful ways can, things that campus, I guess, yeah, what, what's the most impactful thing that campus has in our bodies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love teaching. And I, if it's, you know, I, I, you know, I'm from Vermont. So, right, Ben and Jerry, I think it was Jerry that said, if it's if it's not fun, why do it? And that's yeah. kind of how I feel about teaching. Um, and so I just evolve what I want to talk about to what's interesting to me. And the, I, I think the biggest, and, and it's different for different people, right? But for me, the biggest gift of cannabis has been the way that she has modulated my own endocannabinoid system. You know, the, the function of the endocannabinoid system is to have the being, the organism feel safe. And I, I got to have a body experience of what it, of what can happen if she's holding that container, if she's creating that neurochemistry of safety, how I can be a different human, how I can be a better human, how I can not be hair trigger, how I can not react from my reptilian brain and so that has been my biggest gift is that I feel like I've gotten to be a better person and I, I think used in and with in, in a thoughtful way and worked with is that that is a she's a miracle worker you know I teach students that she is a master plant she can change consciousness and and she does so that might not be true, you know, people with chronic pain or other, you know, anxiety, those other things that might be their biggest gift. But for me, that's, that's really what it's been is that I just feel like I'm a better person. I, Yay. I'm, I think that's just <laughs> awesome because I'm going to step in too, because for me, like, and this is with a lot of patients that we work with too, as nurses is the first thing that cannabis has brought them is hope. Right. So just mm. about that, that hope. And then from hope, what happened, yeah. you become inspired. And when you're inspired, what yeah. happens in spirit, right? Hope and inspiration and yeah. then growth. You take that information that you receive from the plant, from spirit, and you do something to grow, to change, to heal. <laughs> so that's what we're doing as yeah. cannabis. Yeah. We are truly the, the new witches <laughs> of the world. Yeah. Bringing plant medicine and spirituality to traditional medicine which has been really, really yeah. amazing. And we're trying to decrease stigma around what it means to feel good and be high. Yeah. So, um, and that's, that's, yeah. Been, and so many patients, it's that hope, that hope that things can be different, you know? Yeah. I, I remember um, someone talking about increasing quality, like that they would cite all these studies about the benefits of cannabis and pain. Like that's the big thing, right? Like, is it really, does it really work to decrease pain? And in and, and every study, people were, you know, 85% of the people were reporting an increased quality of life. And one of the doctors one time was like, that, if nothing else, it, for all those things that you just said, Sherry, like if you are better able to play with your grandchildren and enjoy your time with your family, yeah, score, exactly. you know? Absolutely. And that's what we do too as cannabis nurses. So just think about in the traditional medical system, what are we focusing on? We're focusing on body parts, 
symptoms. Yeah. If we're lucky, we get to mental, emotional, but do we ever really tap into a person's spiritual health? Right. And so this plant has taught us right. to do things a little bit backwards. It's not about me. It's about the patient, right? What's important to you? Yeah. How do you want to live your life? And then we take them on that journey, educate and empower them. The future of healthcare is patient empowerment. And it is through the education and how this plant like you said, can work on our endocannabinoid system to help us to show up in the world as better people, <laughs> right? Yes. So exactly, mind, body, spirit, the bio, psycho, social, spiritual aspects of healing in one plant. Miracle. Yeah. Yeah. And I, what I love about it too, is that the ability to get the medicine is easy. You, it's so easy. It's a weed, right? It's easy to grow, you know, you know, I say to people, you know, if you want the bud porn, perfect manicured bud, giant bud, you know, maybe not the first time, but to grow medicine, people can make their medicine and, and have all of these benefits. Yeah. Really easily. Oh, I'm just so jealous of Vermont with your legal, what you can grow thing. <laughs> Right, it's oh, like better. We're we're gonna to talk to Timmy about this. I know a lot of us are excited. I know Tim's got a bunch of projects going. And a bunch of people are really excited within the state, um, and we're just trying to get that foothold. I mean, I think right now we're having issues with our our, our CCC control board being established here in a timely fashion right um but it's it's a great program it looks really good uh, i'm really excited for it as well um it must be hard being like I, I know new hampshire new york i mean everybody's we we know how it feels we were there too you know what i mean all, we're all watching yeah. lots of have a lot of fun in the industry right now and then it's not only just having fun yeah. but like it's making money you know it's doing what it's supposed to yeah. do you know what i mean um it's it's you know, most of these legal systems never started well. You know what I mean? They all seem to have issues, but they have all, most of them have seen to get over these issues, right? Um, and, and for the betterment, you know what I mean? No matter what, what the issues are. But obviously we're dealing with politicians. We're dealing with grassroots. We're trying to yield in new industries. So we're going to have some bumps in the road, you know? Um, I'm really excited to talk about New York today with Tim and see where you guys are at because there's, like I said, I think there's some, uh, some, hopefully some substantially good news this week. I know there's a lot of propaganda news that we'd like to discuss and, things about bills and stuff that's happening, which we're actually, we're probably going to talk about some more today, which are some fun ones we've talked about, I've seen. Um, so we'll get all to that. But now for you, Tammy, though, um, how much has COVID affected what you've been doing lately? I mean, you, you kind of briefed on it a little bit earlier with, you know, obviously your, your, the schools that you're doing, but, um, you know, a lot of what you do is in education, yeah. right? Yeah, but the so we didn't run our programs last year and we didn't, we're not running them this year that's a big deal we had 30 people signed up last year and we had 30 people signed up with a 30 person wait list this year and we had to say no to all of them mm -hmm. and i i another thing that i do is i travel to herbal conferences and cannabis conferences and teach and i travel to other schools so i haven't done that in a year and a half now. So that's a big deal. And I'm not, you know, I have online classes um, that I, I do, but I did, I just decided I wasn't going to do a big changeover to more. So what it allowed was last year, a year ago, I launched a grow course, which was great because it was the best of both worlds because the students were we would meet regular, we, we meet regularly. And so I would get to interact with students for six months. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. And we would have, and it was the beginning, right? Was it, we, there wasn't the zoom meeting fatigue that's happening now where you're like, Oh my God, I got another <laughs> zoom meeting, but it was so great, you know, and it was based in like, all right, I would shoot like a two minute video. I'd be like, okay, this is how you germinate. This is how you transplant. Now go do it. And then we'll talk about it later. So yeah. it was great and you how know. it, you know, how it really, I, I've just, I've, you know, the gardens are still here, still work in the gardens. So that part of my life is the same. Yeah. You know, no, the growth courses are fun. And, we're really excited. We're actually, yeah. we're, 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 we're taking a dive into the, the weekly bi-weekly grow course thing with, with Sherry and our Obi-Wan Kenobi grower for the, for in the weeds, right. We're using the bud grower tent system that they, they, they supply people. 
um, through Justin, who's oh, cool. on our show. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really excited about it because I think, like you said, you know, it's just a good interactive experience. People can, you know, there's a lot yeah. of people still trying to learn how to grow. You know what I mean? It makes sense to a yeah. lot of people. Said, uh, yeah. going to dispensaries and some of these other places, the prices are so expensive for an ounce that it's almost worth trying to do it at home. And if you have the time yeah. and you have any sort of, of passion for the plant, you usually do pretty well, right? Um, and information, yeah. every, like you said, Zoom fatigue is is uh, a great one now, right? Because it, it's right. It's like, man, we got they're worse in meetings, right? <laughs> yeah. And can't say no to them because you could be in your car and have you know be on a meeting. <laughs> yeah. like you can avoid them, right? Um, but you know, yeah, it's funny that we talk about cannabis. We talk about strains. It's like, what's the best strain for Zoom fatigue, right? That that's going to be Leafly's next top ten. <laughs> um yeah, exactly going right <laughs> so again i i think we got we got a little diverted there but one of the things i really want to talk to you about is what's what's your favorite thing to educate people on like i know you're a very passionate educator so i mean you gotta have something that you're you really love doing and talking about what what is what is your favorite thing right now it's it's about cannabis it's it's and i don't care what class what class i do about cannabis it's I start with the endocannabinoid system because I want people to have a, a base knowledge of what is happening in my body and how THC is actually mimicking my own endocannabinoids, my own bliss molecules. So there's that. And I'm, you know, I've been teaching the same, like, I feel like I've spent the last four or five years doing cannabis 101. And now, so you say, what are you most excited about? I'm really now wanting to have classes and I would rather them be in person where we talk about plant spirit medicine of cannabis, where we have experiences in a container for people to journey with cannabis and, and, and get information in a, in, a, in a situation where then they have time to process it. So that's feels like my next step, but, you know, I just did a class last night, an hour and a half class on what I call conditions of hope. So I talked about anxiety, depression, and PTSD. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm racing through the class because I have so much information, mm -hmm. but that right now, especially where we are in COVID, I, I'm, I'm wanting to, I've been, I did this whole resiliency series. Like I'm really wanting, I, for me, it's about empowering people, like giving them the information so that then they can go apply it to have less suffering. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the theme, but I'll tell you right now, I'm taking Elaine Ingham's uh, soil food web course, like the, I don't know, a couple hundred hours. Like that's like, if you ask me what I'm most excited about, it's about soil. <laughs> it's about learning how to make soil. I love it. <laughs> and then, yeah, how then I can help my plants. Like I, yeah, anyway, so I can see that in the future. That will be part of what I'm teaching, but that's my little woohoo. Oh my God. So yeah. we, <laughs> we love talking about soil here in the show. Soil rejuvenation. Um, and, and yeah, exactly. You, like you said, when you go on for days and how you treat your soil, and especially on commercial farming, right down into a small grow that you have into a tent, right? We talked to a lot of people that, you know, the yep. live soil movement, right? Um, yep. Things of that nature. You know, a lot of people are using super soils, but we're st the results that we see from live soil is just like, it, it's just purely amazing, yeah. right? And there's a huge difference, guys. You know what I mean? Like you can literally see, smell, taste, like it's it just the, the flower produces differently, right? Um, so you can, you can tell a lot of those things. So it's, it's really fun when you, when, you know, people, it's interesting when you hang out with people that haven't seen or, or, or felt or touched these things and then they come across it, right? Because it yeah. is vastly different. It's not yeah. like these little hard, tense, crazy nugs that, you know, we're used to seeing yeah. coming out from out west. No offense out west. I know we're not getting your best product out here, but, you know, we were East Coast. So, you know, our, our supply for years was like all the, all the California mids, you know what I mean? And now here we come in Vermont yeah. homegrown. We're seeing some beautiful stuff from Mass. We're seeing beautiful stuff from Maine. Um, and it's just, it's really a nice time to be within the industry. And like you said, making medicine's easy. So like you can go out and get cannabis anywhere, bring it home and make stuff. What was your favorite thing to make? A, A, you know, topically wise or well, even for medicine. Yeah. So 
you know, I, I just love making tincture. It's so easy, mm. right? So if I'm making medicine that I want reproducible results, and I've got people that are working with medicines for anxiety, I want something that, you know, is going to be pretty consistent. So that's my easy one. But I would say that my favorite, like, and, and making medicine, love making medicine. <laughs> so um, I, I came up with this I call it Shazama. Well, I called it Shazama Canna, but then I had to shorten it because people were like, what? So I call it Shazama C. So here's what I do. I take honey and I warm it up and I make a paste with turmeric powder, black pepper powder, ginger powder, and cannabis, decarbed cannabis powder. So I mix that all up in a gallon jar and then I heat the honey and then I super saturate the honey. So it's a paste. I'm not trying to extract into the honey. It's holding the paste. And then it's basically like super golden milk in a spoon, right? And then you can just put it in hot water. I send it to my mom. It's like super anti-inflammatory, right? It's got all those herbs and cannabis. And you open the jar and it smells like cannabis and it's high CBD cannabis. It's awesome. So that's my, I love that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, being, being being a chef for years, you know, we I've been you know I've been on the herbalist side for in a different way though. Like you know, we we don't really realize how much you know most chefs are into it because, like you said, turmeric, gingers, honeys, all these really unique uh, foods that we've known for anti-inflammatory effects that could have awesome medical benefits. Superfoods, what we call them, you know what I mean? And when you can actually yeah. enter, bring them in with cannabis, so like when we talk about terpenes and cannabinoids, a lot of these are are, are found in those those similar foods, right? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And it, yeah, it, I, I'm like, okay, what now? What are we going to talk about? Now, what are we going to geek out about? Yes. <laughs> and I love the medicine <laughs> thing. It's great. Uh, what, all right. Yeah. So l- l- let me give you one other thing here because this is something I always like to ask people because, like, you know, we talk about medicine. And one of the biggest things we have is, you know, sativas, indicas, and, and those style formats that we're all trying to get away from. I know, I know, it, I hate using yep. the terms, but. I don't think we've really yep. crowned another specific term yet, but, you know, I like to say cushes and like, you know, Durban poisons and, you know, sativas. Uh, yep. indicas. When, when you make a medicine, are you making medicine from a combination of things? Are you trying to establish like a, a more general entourage effect of a medicine or do you go for strain specific type medicine? Great. I'm, I'm going for condition based medicine. Uh, like so that. the two the two main formulas that I I do that I'm that I want are pain management and anxiety. Hmm. With pain management, like my anxiety formula will work for pain, but when I'm making the pain formula, and these are all I'm I'm having my own experience figure out which plant that I want. And it's usually a one-to-one, right? So it's Mm -hmm. equal parts THC and CBD. And then with the anxiety, I have, I love blueberry muffin. And I think that it's a great strain for anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And so again, and I usually have in my wheelhouse, like when I'm growing my hemp, I, I can, I'll have a more stimulating strain of CBD strains and a more calming. And then I'll be able to then match that with the, the high THC strain. So for me, it's, it's not even indica sativa. It's like, who do I have to work with and who am I going to be like, what, what, who's going to be the, the selection for this year of the medicine making people know to order. Well, I'm going to order the angel wings, which is a one-to-one of CBD and CBD acid. And I can play around with which strains I want to be putting in there based on who I grew the year before. So, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like how I look at eating salads, right? (laughs) Exactly. And what I, what I tell people in classes is like, you can call, you can, you can go on Leafly and be like, oh, I hear, you know, blueberry muffin is good for blah, blah, blah. 
but you don't know if the flower you have is blueberry muffin. Yeah. So you need experience with that flower. And I tell people, growers are like beekeepers. <laughs> beekeepers love their bees. They'll talk about their bees. They know their bees. So go talk to a grower and say, I'm looking for this. Who do you think I should work with? You know, like that's the other thing that I really find is that like I go to a, a, a range of conferences you know, anywhere from the herbal hmm. cannabis conference to the one at, you know, in Albany, the big hemp conference or at, at Harvard, the medical conference. Hmm. And what I notice is this elitism. Hmm. <laughs> we'll just call it what it is. Academic elitism. I remember standing up and asking the PhD scientist from Cornell who was talking about growing and in the front of this conference, there were two tables of growers from California and Oregon. And I said to the, to the guy, I stood up and I just said, so this is a new industry here in New York. <laughs> and are you reaching out to the resources, the hundreds of years of collective resources of growers? And I looked at the people at the front table and, and he, and he said, yeah, we're in communication with uh, universities in Canada. And I was just like, <laughs> no, you know, like that's the other thing is that there are people that know this plant. Yeah. And I, those are the people I want to talk to. Sorry, I don't want to talk to Cornell that's been doing it for two years. Yes. You know, yep. no. I'm going to interject too. That's how I got my healing. I didn't learn from a book, a webinar, mm -hmm. a class a nurse, a doctor, a pharmacist, a PhD, a researcher. I learned none of that. I learned nothing about cannabis yeah. from that. I learned from the grassroots yeah. community. The grassroots community yeah. saved my life. And I truly want to see the merging of, of those two, you know, those two entities, bridging the gap, yeah. work together, bring the plant yeah. together, bring us all together. Cause we all have so much to learn from one another. And I completely agree with you about those initials at the end of the name. <laughs> Does it, <laughs> doesn't yeah. mean that you carry wisdom, you know, and well, the we wisdom. Talk, we, we talked about that. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about that a lot, Sherry, with us um, being that, you know, you are coming from a medical side of things, right? So it's a different mm -hmm. perspective than what you're seeing from the grassroots perspective, right? It's kind of like the herbalism side meets the medical side here. You know what I mean? And how do we, yeah. and how do we, how do we stay open-minded enough to each other's, you know, literally textbook knowledge, right? Because a lot of this is textbook knowledge, but a lot of it is, it's like anything you read and, you know, I'm a chef, so I'll tell you the same thing. A recipe is just a recipe, right? It's just a guideline. You right. Know, the only way you're going to yep. learn is to go fuck something up, go burn something, go, you know, burn your <laughs> cut. You know, like you, you learn from a, a few mistakes, but you also learn from experience, right? So, right. yeah, at some yeah. point, you you learn if I'm going to do it this way, it's not going to turn out the way I need it to be, and you'll have that general understanding. And when you start to understand, like Sherry, we talked about this all the time, procedures, right? Everything has a procedure, and if you understand how procedures work, and you can you know apply that those procedures to whoever you're working with to get the you know, like you're saying, Tammy, you know the the end product that you need designated for whatever you want it for, whether it's for a certain patient, whether it's for a general public application. Right. And we talk about this a lot, which, which is thank you for, for bringing that up Tammy. Cause like, you know, we can have four or five different strains that we can manipulate in a way to provide a, a really good round of medicine for people. Like you said, four to four, four to ones, you know, three to ones, you can, you can change the ratios around. And, you know, we, we talk about a lot where you, you know, with salads, like one of my favorite things is salads, right? Why? why? Because, you know, you can smoke one and go, eh, I didn't like it this much. I'm going to change the ratios around and you can smoke it again. And then it's like, it's almost kind of fun to smoke. All right. Um, and every time you're going to end up with a different feeling and a different, way it's going to affect your body right so like you know like tammy was saying like, you know, whether you want to be calm relaxed whether you you know anxious which is one of the biggest things that you know with cannabis is is is, is a, an interesting thing for me because i hear about that a lot from people who are you know opioid or, or cocaine users is the anxious issues that cannabis gives to them you know what i mean and i'm like man you know you you've done cocaine right like yeah i would think that that would be, give you more anxiety than than than, than cannabis but what, what's the reasoning behind that, Tammy? Is, is there a connection there? Do you know of or anything? The, for the anxiousness that happens? 
Yeah, with cannabis, right? Because I mean, obviously, I mean, I've had strains that make me think I'm going to have a heart attack, right? Like I've had some crazy derby yeah. poisons. And yeah. Things of that and, nature. And, and, well, there's a couple of things, right? There is the fact that THC, if it's a high enough dose, can induce tachycardia. So, and I also, so, so there's that that in itself, even if I'm not an anxious person, but my heart rate starts going up, it's going to, my body is acting like it's anxious. So there's one thing, there's another, and, and, and maybe you talk about this on Terp Tuesdays, but right, then there's like, you can take the same flower on each, on a different day and have a completely different experience, right? And one of it is what's, what's your physiology for the day? How's your liver working? How are you clearing things? Nice. And, and then also I, I, I love, I love the fact that we don't know everything. Right. Mm-hmm. So the fact that, and, and we're coming, you know, I, 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 t- I love talking about terpenes and we don't know a lot about it. And there, there is that magical thing that is happening between the terpenes and the cannabinoids and, and how much are you getting in? You know what I mean? Like there's so many variables that it is going to be different. Like that's okay. So that's the other beautiful thing about cannabis. She's a master plant. I also think she's a coyote teacher, you know, (laughs) Wiley coyote. So she's just like, yeah, you think you got this going on and you think you know me? Ha ha. No, we're doing something else now. So I, I think there's that piece. I love it. And yeah. also with the anxiety, I think that there's this other piece that people don't talk about. She's a master plant. She opens us. She changes our consciousness. And where we decide to open that consciousness is really important. I tell, I tell my students, don't open your consciousness and then go to Walmart. That's just mean, you know? So I think sometimes for people opening up that state and then not having a safe place to be mm-hmm. or, or be like, or it could be safe, but you could be like, holy shit, I didn't think I was going to open up this much today. That, that should cause anxiety. You know what I mean? So I think that, you know, we can talk about, yeah, the tachycardia and blah, blah, blah. But then there's also what's happening to my psyche when I'm doing this. And we, we need, to, sorry. Vulnerable. It makes people feel so vulnerable. Yes. And feeling vulnerable creates anxiety, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you're, you're and so we have to. haven't used to feeling before. So it's like, oh my God, what's going exactly. on? Exactly. Anxiety. Exactly. You know, or people saying, you know, I have a friend who classic, right? I gave her a tincture. She had it one day. She, I said, start with a drop. So she took four drops. She's like, yeah, I didn't feel much. A couple days go by. She's like, oh, I'm going to do it again. So she did four more drops. Bye bye. Gone. <laughs> and she said, I don't like it because I don't like that. I can't control it. Yep. You know, I'm like, yeah, there, there it is. And that is absolutely true about cannabis. You cannot control her. Like she is a wild girl. We can right. think that we have control. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you yeah. said that. Cause we do, we do talk about that. Cause that, that's a, uh, when we talk about ways to consume cannabis, right? What's your best way, especially in your patient, um, you know, the, the yep. other question is, should, should we really start talking about the micro dosing topic of cannabis, right? Like, you know, if there's an issue with yep. anxiety and certain things, you know, I know, you know, Florida and some of these other states are talking about capping THC limits on certain products that are available to the public, right? And, you know, is this a good or bad thing? Um, should people be able to, you know, have access to higher percentage things, kind of like what we discussed, like we do with alcohol, right? I mean, we can go walk in and yep. buy, you know, high, you know, high grade <laughs> grain liquor, right? Um, or we can go buy some, uh, you know, some wine, right? So we have we have options of, of how yep. we consume, correct? Um, now, how do you how do you feel about you know cons- consumptions? Because you're talking about you know edibles, tinctures, things like that, where you know, like you said, people don't have control over them. But you know, I know you know Sherry recently. We we hung out this last weekend, and I think she she had a mind mind open in time. We we got her dabbed up pretty good and had some fun with her, but. <laughs> We, we, we showed her a little bit of the grassroots side of cannabis, right? Um, but, right. you know, one, one of the things that she commented on, this is something that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad to, to talk to you about is 
she she was talking about the difference that she knows between edibles and and, and and actually smoke inhalation right like with an edible like you said you don't feel like you're you're in control it's actually you know it lasts a lot longer than if you would consume yep. smoke but it seems like when you smoke cannabis it seems to kind of affect you in a completely different way now with the same plan when you smoke or consume does it really affect you differently if between the two ways of uh, consumption well, it's, it's about dose. It's, it's about right. the fact that oral dosing is much stronger, mm. you know, like, and the fact that if we want to geek out with chemistry, that the first pass when, you know, so it's also about liver function, but the mm. first pass of that, that THC through the liver actually creates a metabolite that's five times more potent than THC. And if you aren't able to then, if you don't then metabolize it to its next product, it enters your bloodstream and it's five times more potent. So that is different, right? And mm. people's different absorption levels. And so that in itself is very different. And I wonder, I don't know for sure, but right, like usually, like if I make a tincture, I'm decarbing it separate. I'm not capturing all the terpenes, right? I'm losing terpenes. Mm -hmm. So I think that one of the differences is that when I'm inhaling, I'm getting terpenes at a higher dose than when I'm eating it or mm -hmm. taking tincture. And I, I, for me, just to clarify, people go, oh, do you make gummies and edibles? I'm like, no, because it's too many steps and I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. And I also... Like if I'm talking about medicine, you know, like if I'm working with chronic pain, it's just like, okay, take two drops, right? I think it's easier to titrate yeah. your dose. And, and the other thing is that if you make a delicious cookie Thank and you. the whole cookie's 50 milligrams, you're not going to eat a little piece of the cookie. <laughs> you're just not, right? right. I'm not, <laughs> right? So for me, and again, it's, and people go, oh, but the tincture tastes horrible. I'm like, it's medicine. Put it in some water and suck it down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that is one of the <laughs> biggest like... things that people talk about is the taste of what we consider medicine. But to me, it's like, it's so different than a yeah. mushroom or a plant-based product that, you know, like you said, I, I'm glad you, you mentioned that because it does taste better than some of these prescription drugs that you buy over the counter that just, you're like, what, how? Yeah. You know, uh, that we've been taking our whole lives that who knows really technically what or how it's been made i mean i know it's yeah. all in the bottle but um you know not, sometimes it's not not natural like i laugh that when people talk about flavoring and especially when we have terpenes and and things that people add back into on on products yep. you know, it's like you know yep. cannabis doesn't taste like fruity pebbles like i can actually no. pebbles sugar you know i would say that a lot because just you know everybody laughs about that because you know fruity yeah that's right you know what i mean like there's nothing you know cotton candy yeah. you know really strong flavors are just they don't really occur to that level you know what i mean um and when you actually find some really good plant-based terps i don't think a lot of people realize the health benefits of terpenes right because you were just mentioning the loss of terpenes being a big you know tribute to the way that the product reacts the way you consume it right yeah yeah, yeah and and you know people ask well how can i learn about terpenes i'm like go learn some aromatherapy. Aromatherapists have a step on us because they've been studying these smelly molecules called terpenes, you know, doing and exactly. It's, and, you know, terpenes are how the plant world talks to each other and to us and to the world around them is through terpenes, you know, yeah. it's, yeah, I, lo I love it. We're 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 gonna. That's gonna be a great segment. Now we're gonna actually dive into terpene Tuesday, but it's fun for me okay. because I, what I like is you know we've been talking about cannabinoids for a little while now, right? With the new science, but now it seems like the real the game changer is the terpenes, right? And like it's someone yeah. like you said, it's been around forever. We use it in everything: uh, shampoos, toothpaste. You know, this week we're yeah. talking about toothpaste, right? Um, anything that has a, a a husky or a smell an earth tone smell something that is provided by you know naturistic smell is a terpene guys you know what i mean we can 
natural right. terpenes come off of a lot of things. We've been using vanilla basically terpenes for how long in all of our cooking? You know, I bet you you have a <laughs> right, in your right. cabinet right now, you know, uh, and technically it's a terpene, right? When we talk about essential oils, that's all, that's really what it is, you know? Um, and, and we, and we, you know, give people, you know, herbalist shit for this for years and it's just, I love laugh at, but as a chef, I love it. <laughs> um, here we go. We're going to dive into terpene Tuesday real quick. So we're going to take a time out. We're going to shift some gears. Now, Sherry, we, we uh, I know, and I apologize to everybody, um, you know, we, we've, I've had a couple business meetings. We had a couple of things that threw a couple of spokes in the, in the gears of things this week. And then me and Sherry went for like a whole weekend long of shooting a whole bunch of segments and a whole bunch of new shows for us guys. So stay tuned for that. We have the different views reviews that we're doing. And we also have the greeners on the grow, which like we're talking about is a, is, is a weekly grow segment that we're trying to, to pull off. So people have an understanding of how to get into growing, right? So because first of all, it's about how do we break the ice? How do we make people feel comfortable purchasing a tent, going out, starting to grow? Like you said, it can, al- it can almost be a little bit too much for some people. And then in the minute an issue happens, it's, oh my God, my kid's dying. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it, it can be a little stressful, but it, it's really not that bad, right? You know, so it's a plant, you know, and she bounces back and, and she's pretty resilient. But here we go. We're going to do our terpene Tuesday and, and Sherry, um, what we're going to do is for everybody that's, that's tuned in looking for can talk we'll, we'll we'll post that up tomorrow so we'll share that out tomorrow we'll do it and uh, i'll finish it up tonight it's just a very long segment we're we'll trying to trim it down and we're and it just took a while to get it to the point where we weren't going to finish it today so we apologize to, to you guys that's a good one and it'll be worth the wait you know it's it's about it's about you know we tie in health awareness months you know all of the different topics of health awareness and we bring in the endocannabinoid system and to show how it's all interconnected and so we, you know, this month is National Nutrition Month. So we all know that everything we do or don't do in our lives affects our endocannabinoid system and nutrition is probably the number one, <laughs> right? And so the topic was on obesity and cannabis. So that's what we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, it's a really good segment. It is kind of long, but there's, you know, there's a lot of things that research has shown, you know, yeah. in regards to how cannabis works to modulate your endocannabinoid system, the metabolic processes, your digestive system, and how we metabolize foods you know, yeah. to provide energy. So it's a good segment. So today's really- segment on terpineol. Right. Hey, y'all. No, it was really amazing to see your can talk. Cause usually when we do the can talk segments, right. We're, we're, we're doing real stu- case studies, right. You're really trying to provide case studies and, and, and the reports on that. So people know that this is the real information that's available to us right now. Right. And typically most of these topics we have, it, it's very minimal case studies. This one seemed to have a lot of case studies and the effectiveness in the case studies was what hundred percent. <laughs> 100 percent right so scientific clinical studies 100 percent effective and working in, in decreasing obesity it was just in, in how it modulates the endocannabinoid system it was just fascinating really cool but they, topic. No, but they say we don't have the the science or the research yet right i mean th- this is what blows my mind it's it's we're, we're literally this anyways guys this whole segment is basically it's going to be a long one because i I can't cut the information out it's just too good you know what i mean so it's going to be really educational check it out tomorrow we'll share it around you'll find it everywhere but it'll be the can talk segment and it's about nutrition which is i think like you said one of the most important things for all of us nutrition and sleep right you know without that what are we right Uh, but here we go guys terpenol uh our terpene tuesday we're going to show you that instead and hey Check them out. We show them every ter- uh, every Tuesday on both all of our social media pages between the Green Nurse and uh, In the Weeds. So we haven't showed one on In the Weeds show yet. Here we go. Check it out. Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sherry from The Green Nurse at In The Weeds Prohibition Talk Radio. And today is Terpene Tuesday. And we're gonna be discussing the terpene terpineol. But first, let's discuss what a terpene is. Terpenes are organic compounds that produce specific smells and tastes. They're found in cannabis, essential oils, plants, trees, and foods. In cannabis, the terpenes help ward off attacks from animals, insects, and fungus during the growth cycle of the plant. When a cannabis plant goes through the curation process, the terpenes become oxidized, resulting in what we know as terpenoids. Terpenes contribute to the entourage effect and have their own healing properties. The entourage effect suggests that utilizing cannabinoids 
and terpenes together produces a more potent medicinal effect rather than using the isolated compounds alone. Another way of saying that is the whole of the plant is greater than its individual parts. Plants containing terpineol have been used for centuries as natural remedies. For example, the lime blossom, also referred to as the linden flower, was used in traditional European medicine to treat colds, coughs, and flu. In the tea form, the lime blossom has been called the nectar of the kings for its soft, sweet scent and health benefits. What does it smell like? So terpineol has various different scents, and that's because it's found in various natural sources. So it smells like lilac, pine, citrus, lemons, limes, and it has a floral, woody undertone all at the same time. Terpineol is found in natural sources such as pine trees, tea tree oil, lemons, limes, juniper berry, and nutmeg. In everyday life, terpineol is used as a scent and flavoring agent in foods, perfumes, cosmetics, soaps, lotions, and a variety of cleaning products. The types of products that have that gentle lilac profile may contain terpineol. It's also found in this tea called Lapsang Sochong tea, and it emits a piney, smoky aroma. And this type of terpene found in this tea is often used as a flavoring agent in baked goods. The medicinal properties and therapeutic benefits of terpineol include anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-tumor, and antimicrobial properties. Terpineol has been known to enhance the permeability of skin to lipid soluble compounds, which may help create a topical entourage effect with lipophilic cannabinoids. So as we know, cannabinoids are fat soluble. So this terpene allows the skin to be able to absorb more of the cannabinoids by its pure potential of what it's able to do. So for example, if a patient wants to use the anti-acne effects of CBD, combining CBD or the cannabinoids around the plant, including CBD, with a small amount of terpineol may improve the ability of this topical to absorb and also increase the bioavailability, which may improve the possible therapeutic results. In Canakees, we have been exploring various different modules on studies related to cannabis found terpenes. So on terpineol, there are 22 studies in regards to terpineol that is found in the cannabis plant. There are no double blind studies. There are no human clinical trials, but they have been testing terpineol in the lab with animals. So the different studies by the organ systems with terpineol in cannabis include the nervous system, the digestive system, the immune system, the respiratory system, integumentary system, mental emotional system, which is our central nervous system, endocrine and muscular system. The top condition studies are bacterial infections, lung cancer, asthma, peripheral neuropathy, stomach ulcers, depression, liver cancer, fatty liver disease, and herpes. Wow, that's a lot of different things in 22 studies. And it just shows us that we have so much more research to do. Some of the studies that we're gonna talk about include a study on anti-inflammatory properties. The study was published in 2007 in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry. And another was published in 2010 in the Basic Clinical Pharmacology and Toxicology. These two studies yielded positive results for terpineol as a potential new component to treat inflammation and pain. In 2011, there was an antioxidant study in the Food and Chemical Toxicology, which indicated that terpineol had a stronger antioxidant effect when compared to other commercial antioxidants. 
The scientists found that this outcome to be very, very encouraging for future studies with Drakeniol fighting against certain types of cancers, such as breast cancer and chronic myeloid leukemia, which leads us into a 2010 study. There was an anti-cancer study published in the Anti-Cancer Research, and the results suggested that terpineol inhibited the growth of in vitro cancerous tumor cells, specifically those of small cell lung carcinoma. It also noted that it may be able to destroy certain cancers such as lung cancer cells and leukemia cells. In 2012, there was an antimicrobial study published in the Journal of Anaerobes, and it found that terpineol exhibited strong antimicrobial activity against oral bacteria. In effect, these researchers now recommend low levels of terpineol in conjunction with linalol to be incorporated into toothpaste or gargling solutions. Better choices for healthier teeth. So some strains that include terpineol include Jack Hara, White Widow, Girl Scout Cookies, and OG Kush. And so what's so cool about this is all of these different strains have various different cannabinoids and terpenes. So we can't say that a specific terpene is going to have a specific effect, so specifically when we're talking about cannabis because of all of the different components. There is so much therapeutic potential with terpenoids and cannabinoids together, and we truly do have so much more to learn. This concludes Terpene Tuesday for today. My name is Sherry Tuckus from The Green Nurse. And be sure to join Nurse Mark and I for our Canna Talk segment every Wednesday live from 4.20 to 6.20 p.m. at In the Weeds Prohibition Talk Radio. And if you're a patient suffering from chronic illness or disease, if you're new to cannabis, if you're interested in how to incorporate cannabis into a health and wellness lifestyle, or if you're interested in learning about how to have a safe, adult use recreational experience, reach out to us at The Green Nurse, www.thegreennurse.com. And remember, it's about living your best life. Tripino. Awesome, sorry. Awesome. <laughs> it's so fun. I, you know, I teach what I most need to learn. You know, the more the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. And this plant, just like you know, Tammy was saying, is when anyone makes a blanket statement about cannabis, I'm like, aha, the plant's gonna show you the truth. <laughs> Constantly evolving. That's what I love about this. Constantly learning. Yeah. Well, it's interesting when we see these because you know we we do see terpene Tuesdays. A lot of people do the terpene Tuesday, but it's it's pretty basic and it's pretty you know this is what it smells like, tastes like, and how it makes you feel kind of thing. But it really goes much deeper into that. And then even with the science that backs those comments and backs what we found, you know what I mean. A lot of people are like we said. It's like how do we in, inspire someone to believe the truth? You know what I mean? Because it's like you know a lot of it's like oh these guys are just saying this because they want it to be legal you know what i mean that's been uh, <laughs> of course we want it legal <laughs> right well it's been you know it's been something that they've said to us for for years now you know last week when we had um keith on keith's drop from normal you know he's talking about that before you know it's like a lot a lot of you know what people are saying against us is you know going the medical route is it was just a route to 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 get the stoners to get legal, you know what I mean? Which I would, that's not the case at all, you know what I mean? So it's, you know, to yeah. try to break these stigmas, we need to have evidence and proof that backs everything up that we do and say that, you know, people can go find it's not a guess or a maybe or, or whatever. And, you know, this, this is a government standpoint on the research, right? But like we, we say all the time, like, here's, here's the research. Like we're working off the research. We found the research. The research is there, like colleges and all these great places are doing the research. Right. Um, so what, what, you know, what are we doing with the research? Right. So <laughs> anyways, again, great, great episode. That was fun. Uh, th- those are a lot yeah. of fun. So tripping Tuesdays, we, we try to get those up and played for you guys and out on every Tuesday. So it gives you a little bit more education on terpen terpenes, terpenols. We've got quite a few down. We're going to start, you know, really start looking into some, you know, unique ones that no one's really heard. You know, it's going to be yeah. fun to do some more research on because I think we've gone through all the ones that, our database has right <laughs> so hey you know here we go it'll be a lot of fun uh but right now we're going to talk to tim real quick uh we'll get him involved um hello <laughs> hey so obviously one of the big headlines the last few days that you know i'm sure we've all seen and shared was our white house right uh, apparently 
our you know our, our new White House staff has you know taken the liberty to remove some of the white the, the staffers because of use of cannabis, right? Um, <laughs> which is a really interesting take because you know when you know when we've been talking about for the last few months here now that the the Biden administration's in office, we don't really dive into politics that much. We try to stay away from it and stay biased because you know we know there's a lot of strong contentions on both sides but here we are you know what i mean like you know we were really excited democrats republicans there's a lot of um bipartisanship you know that we've seen recently which is we're going to talk about here in a couple articles that we've read but what's going on in the white house i mean is this is this old habits really- die hard old habits die hard <laughs> right you know and, and this blows my mind i think a lot about our federal government and think about all of the intelligent talented, creative people who are banned from ever working in any aspect of our federal government because they choose to smoke some cannabis. They can go down to the bars, get chip all night. That's no problem. Fine. Perfect. Have fun. They can smoke cigarettes all day long. I've been addicted to nicotine, the most addictive substance known to man. No problem. Fine. But because you smoke cannabis, and not even like currently smoke cannabis, but within the last year or two or three or five or whatever arbitrary number they want to put on it, you can never get a security clearance. You can never work for the White House. You can never work for the FBI. You can never work for the NSA. You can never work for the CIA. That is such a large cross section of our population. Of probably some of the more creative and talented, and my experience in the cannabis industry is anything, intelligent people um, that you are just completely and totally excluding. Uh, from sharing their knowledge and experiences. And you think about it, and it's, it, there's an entire swarth of experience that comes from oh, maybe experimenting outside the box a little bit. Um, you know, and I think, it's, I, I think it's a real loss. I think it's a real loss for the White House. I think it's a real loss for, um, you know, a lot of these federal agencies uh, that get mirrored into these just same patterns of thinking uh, because it's the same exact people who are being brought in. Um, you know, I've heard like a lot of these agencies, and this is not a joke. I mean, you know, kind of my own personal feeling about religion, but a lot of them, high, high, high percentage of Mormons, because they say the background, you know, investigations are that much easier to do. Hey, all the more power of the Mormon religion. They don't drink, they don't do anything. That's wonderful. But when you take an enlarged percentage of the t- same type of people, you get the same type of thinking. You can have a, you know, a wide variety, a wide diversity in thought, in concepts, in problem solving, if the everybody at the table is the exact same type of personality, that type A, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything. There's a need for that. I'm not knocking people like that. I don't really understand them, but we definitely need them. But you also need other people. You also need the creative types. You also need the types that are willing to think outside the box, that are moved beyond simply, uh, you know, what they are told them. So I think it's a shame, but again, we're talking about the federal government where these policies have been in place for decades and decades and decades and decades, and it's 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 tough to let it go. Yeah, I was, I was just I was amazed to see this. I think everybody was pretty shocked to see these headlines. Kind of like you said, it's kind of revert on all their pro policies that we've seen up to this point, right? Um, really, really interesting move. We'll see how that that pans up. Like you said, it, it removes yeah. some great people out of offices, right? Before it was a complete and total death sentence. If you would put on any form for the government, you ever even, you know, smelt marijuana, you were pretty much exempt. And then we saw Clinton, you know, oh, I didn't inhale. And then Obama, oh, I did inhale, but it was years and years and years ago. You know? So even there, we are seeing some slow progress. We are seeing it now not be the third rail of politics. We are seeing it not be an immediate, you know, now it's okay. If you haven't smoked pot in the last five years, you can work in the White House. Yeah. All right, well, that's better than, you know, if you've ever even, you know, touched a joint you can't so hopefully maybe in another 20 years they'll uh say you know if you haven't done it two years you can work here whatever we'll see um but there there is progress it's just you know glacially slow at that level of government and were some of these people even from legal states as well which makes even more in fact most of them most of them was younger staffers from what i understand from least state legal states okay schedule one controlled substance (laughs) unreal right unreal i was just Uh, writing a piece yeah not this (laughs) So on another government level, right, we, 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 we've talked about this uh, quite a bit in the show. Uh, New Jersey made a move to try to, to push this was the uh, the insurance services, right? So now there's a bipartisan bill that seeks to guarantee campus insurance services going up now, right? I don't know if you had a chance to see that. That's uh... I, have, I have actually, you know, and this is exactly um, what we need to see. This is moving towards normalization now. 
Should the government be telling insurance companies what to do? Well, I, I, you know, I think there's a strong argument that that may not be the best policy moving forward. It would be nice to see these companies doing it on their own, but, you know, it's essential. Um, you know, if we're expected to be a real industry, we need basic services like insurance, like account, like attorneys. Um, and, you know, if they're not going to do it on their own, then maybe they need a little push toward it. Uh, I know there are millions of medical patients who cannot afford medicine. Um, that is unacceptable. You know, that's, that's unacceptable in the first world nation. That's unacceptable here in America. We're supposed to care about people. We're supposed to care about each other. We're supposed to care about our communities. Um, and we certainly should be caring about uh, those who have medical conditions. So when they can't access a medicine that makes them better, that's a problem. So it is good to see, um, you know, I, I'm not, I didn't get a chance to really dive in to see if this was medical insurance or more business insurance or crop insurance or any of the multitude, you know, of, but it's the principle remains the same. Um, and the broader principle is the cannabis industry needs access to professional services. Yep. Looks like more like it's a business service kind of end of things. Yeah. Um, well, they go hand in hand. Because yeah. if it's business services, you know, yeah. uh, the medical insurance should come right along with that and agricultural insurance should come right along with that as well. And if they're going to insure the industry, they're going to insure the industry. And, if, you know, you certainly should be insuring the patients who need access to that medicine. Well, especially now, I mean, I don't have a total number of how many medical uh, campus patients there are across the country, but we're only lacking six states that ha don't have a medical, any sort of medical campus legalization or laws, right? So six if states. You include ultra low uh, CBD states like uh, Georgia and Texas. I believe there's only three states left in the entire country that don't have some form of legalized cannabis. Yeah. Um, oh. Right. I, Idaho, Kansas, and Nebraska, um, if I remember correctly, and Kansas well, currently uh, has Ohio, a legalization bill, you know, a medical legalization bill on the table. I believe Nebraska does too. I think it's those three, if I remember correctly. Yeah. The only ones that have you know, absolutely nothing left. So at what point does the federal government, you know, I mean, come on, how many places do we need to legalize? You know, if we've got 48 states with legal adult use, is that going to be enough? Can we change the federal law at right. that point? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'll be kind of interesting if we get to a, uh, you know, 100% of the states have something legal and the federal government is still insisting it's illegal. Um, you know, I, that, that just can't continue to exist. I can't believe it's lasted this long. It's just such a glaring hypocrisy. People have to look at that and be like, it, it starts to really lose faith in what we're doing here. Well, we, you know, we, we're talking about decriminalization. We have said the South Dakota governor is uh, considered back in a campus decriminalization bill, which is another unique thing, which hopefully we get Tough. that passed. Tough. Yeah. South Dakota people, the, the will of the people was to legalize medical and adult use. And they can't stand it. And they try challenging it. And the courts are not having it. Now they're coming up with this deal. We don't, you know, it's, I wish these politicians would remember we live in a representative democracy. And as a governor, as any head elected official, you're not there to impose your will on the people. We do not live in a monarchy. You are there to represent the will of the people. And when the people have spoken with a 62, 63, 65, 68% voice, that's pretty clear of what the people want. And then when these politicians say, yeah, well, you know, the people don't know what's good for them. That mm -hmm. type of thinking is atrocious and it doesn't have any place here. And it, to me, it just, you know, these ballot initiatives are an opportunity. They're, you know, the last piece of real democracy that we really have in this country where people really can work together to get what the people want enacted as laws, you know? And it's telling you, only 28 states have ballot initiatives. You know, we don't hear in Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, but the states that do, when these ballot initiatives pass, that's pretty serious. And for the governor and for the legislatures just to simply ignore the will of the people and try to impose their own idea of what's right and what's wrong onto their people, that's also a really fundamentally flawed uh, concept of how things should be. <laughs> a little bit, right? <laughs> well, that's what's happened in South Dakota now. You know, they're trying to supplant the will of the people by, okay, well, no, we're not going to do that, but we'll try to do this. No, people need to stick strong and the courts need to do what's right, which is uphold the ballot initiative that was passed legally in the state. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is amazing that they that we're they're in this position right now. Um, now we're talking about uh, the Dakotas, right? What about New York, right? Uh, so <laughs> it was just eleven minutes ago. <laughs> this is the update to before, but in New York lawmakers and the governor agree on a recreational cannabis legalization bill. 
Um, so they're poised to to do this, right? What, 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 did what, what did I say? As soon as Jersey went, New York was going to be right behind them. You know? Albany is not going to let that tax money flow into Trent. That is not going to happen. Um, <laughs> you know, and this is, you know, I had some real questions. Um, there's some real issues with New York's governor right now. Um, which that's a whole nother story we could talk about. <laughs> Unbelievable. But, um, you know, I really thought that that could come up the works. Uh, a lot of the pressure to get this through has been uh, in a method by including it in the budget, which is uh, which has been Governor Cuomo's kind of vehicle to get this through a very fractured legislature. I think there's a lot of will to do it, but how to get it done, the exact uh, provisions, uh, tax provisions, um, you know, some penalty provisions for impaired driving and underage possession. You know, there's still a lot of the details that seem to be gridlocked in the legislature over the last two years. Um, now that's kind of reversed uh, because Cuomo doesn't, he has lost a lot of political capital and he may not even be governor for very much longer. Um, so what we've seen now is the legislature really take the issue and start hashing out some of these problems. And the last thing we've heard now is they were able to get through the impaired driving uh, impasse, which was holding things up for a while. And cautious optimism, I mean, I've said this every year since 2017, maybe this is the year for New York, uh, but maybe this really is the year for New York. We're expecting to see a final bill come out. Um, what that final bill is gonna say, how it's gonna look, you know, obviously there's some concerns, um, as I'm sure Tammy can tell you, the hemp rules and regulations that came out, no bueno, um, were not not very conducive to uh, grow the industry. Um, the medical marijuana program in New York, also no bueno, um, a lot of really ridiculous regulations, a lot of restrictions, limitations on licenses. Um, you know, people are paying $20 million to get one of the licenses, you know, that that's an issue. Yep. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping adult use does better than hemp and uh, medical. We'll see. But at the end of the day, even if it's a horrific bill, legalization is better than criminalization. And if it stops, you know, uh, one person from being arrested, then it's a good thing and we can work to improve it. And, you know, people in New York can work to improve that bill. Um, but it's more of a symbolic victory as well because it is one of the, you know, the largest state on the East Coast or one of the powerhouses. And when you see, you know, coast to coast, California to New York uh, legalize, that is a very strong incentive uh, for the federal government to maybe move their butt a little bit faster than they have been. Um, and I think the other factor we have to look at here is the Safe Banking Act, which is tied very, very, very closely to New York. New York is the financial capital of the world. There's no question about it. Um, New York is estimated to do $800 million in cannabis sales in New York City alone. Um, you're not going to be doing $800 million in sales and cash. And we just saw today a conviction of uh, two individuals from EAS who were trying to circumvent the bank rules, which a lot of dispensaries do, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, in order to not make this a cash business, you know? And they were really not trying to scam anybody. They were trying to keep, you know, things like legitimate, like records and transaction tracing. <laughs> and they were just convicted. God only knows what they're going to get sentenced to in the federal system. It's terrifying to think. Um, but that just shows you that we cannot keep this as a cash only system. So New York legalizing, I say, would tie, would almost make the Safe Banking Act an inevitability. Uh, and the Safe Banking Act passing would be an incredibly beneficial uh, thing for everyone straight down the board in every aspect of this industry, whether it's medical patients now having access to medicine using debit cards and credit cards, or you know, whether it's businesses having bank loans to be able to expand, whether it's access to federal uh, loans and funding programs. The, the Safe Banking Act would impact, have a positive impact that I, we, we could spend all day talking about all the ways that would benefit the industry. Mm -hmm. No, that's for the, oh man, if we get these big, you know, that, the more act to go, we'd be looking good. I mean, banking is a huge part of the industry. Insurance is the next thing like we talked about earlier. To me, those, those if we can get those going in the industry, at least accessible, yeah. right? It's so these guys aren't getting their doors kicked in. And so they're not, you know, proposed to be doing illegal processes, right? Like you said, these guys are just trying to do legal business because you need records, right? How, you know, with this cash business. I mean, that, agree, that poses a great point that we actually, I don't think we've talked about before. is just even the record system that, how are you supposed to keep these records? How are you supposed to pay your taxes every year when it comes to around this time? Cash? Bags of cash. You know, and I mean, I don't know how LA does it. 
New York, it will not work. It will not work. <laughs> it will cause so many problems, which of course will then be blamed on legalization of cannabis. Which, no, 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 no. You know, because that's what we love to do. We love to scapegoat all of the ill effects of prohibition and blame it on what's being prohibited. Um, instead of, you know, the truth, which is no, it's the ramifications of prohibition that are creating these problems, not the substance itself. Legalize it and all of a sudden these problems go away. Uh, you know, so, you know, we can't, we can't, you cannot have an illegal adult use system in New York City and expect it to be all cash, com- you know, all cash <laughs> business. It's just, it, it is unrealistic. Um, we need I mean, to get the state banking act passed, but it's now been introduced back in Senate, the Senate. This, I, I, you know me, <laughs> I'm the ultimate pessimist when it comes to federal legislation. Every time you get excited, I'm like, oh, no, that's never going to happen. You know, I'm the gloom and doom guy. Uh, this one I'm actually feeling really positive about. Uh, it's being reintroduced in the House. It's being reintroduced in the yes. Senate. The current, you know, our, our old nemesis, Mitch McConnell, has been relegated to the small office. Uh, and the guy in the big office, the uh, Senate Majority Leader now is Chuck Schumer out of New York, who is, um, let's just say, pretty pro cannabis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a really good chance this is going to make it through. You know, I, I don't know every committee chair. I don't know if there's any prohibitionist currently chair sitting, you know, but there is a lot of momentum. But the flip side of that is we still going to need, I believe it's 16 or 18, 18, 16. One of those two Republicans to be on board uh, mm. because this can't pass with uh, the 50 vote that we've right. seen. Yeah. Um, this needs to be a supermajority of uh, senators voting. So mm. the simple majority of Democrats, even if every Democrat votes for it uh, and every Democrat is not going to vote for it, um, that still wouldn't be enough. This really needs to be a bipartisan issue. This really needs to you know, cross the aisle. This really needs to bring in, you know, get away from the conservative liberal blue red dynamic that we've all been trained to keep at each other's throats these days mm-hmm. and realize this benefits everybody. This benefits everybody because cannabis is being sold. Estates are legalizing at an incredibly fast pace and keeping this as a cash only system is nobody benefits and everybody is hurt by that. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that the safe banking act gets through. I'm very excited about that. Well, right now, right now, we, you know, we're a couple months into the new administration, right? So, what, what do you think the bipartisanship looks like? I mean, we, we we're seeing a lot of bipartisan bills being introduced, but is it are they different groups of bipartisan cliques? Is it uh, you know overall do we have enough, or is it just not? Where are we not? Quite I don't know. Right? You know, it, it's it's can people put their BS aside for the betterment of the country? Right. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm thinking it's better a better chance now than ever. Yeah. Um, I think out of all the bills that have the most bipartisan appeal is the Safe Banking Act. Um, you've got literally everybody, uh, attorney generals from the states, uh, you know, the uh, federal banking associations, you know, National Credit Union Association. I, I, everybody who has a stake in this is almost unanimously right, left, conservative, you know, conservative, liberal, every think tank, every, every economist. This needs to pass. We have a what's standing as of right now a $20 billion industry, which puts it on a par with the music industry was 20 billion, I believe last year and growing rapidly. Mm-hmm. Throw New York into that, throw Florida into adult use when Texas finally gets around to it. You know, I mean, we're having, which in a few years can very easily break a hundred billion dollar industry. Keeping that all in cash is just, it's insane. Ridiculous. You know, it, it, it's ludicrous. So uh, more and more and more and more, I think people are starting to get on board with, you know what, uh, the Pandora's box is open. We're not going to encourage legalization, you know, because that was everything. Oh, by doing this, we're just going to encourage further legalization. Oh, it's too late. Everybody's legalized. <laughs> you know, there's, no more, there's nobody left. Here. What are you going to encourage Idaho? Okay, good luck, guys. Um, but, you know, it's one of those bills that's just so much common sense. Whether you love it or hate it, it's there. It's happening. You can't stick your head in the sand and pretend it's not. I'm just gonna not, not you know, let's do it. So let's let's really hope because that would be revolutionary. That would be a game changer. Uh, and it'd be really nice if they got rid of 280B while they're at it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thought we lost it after a minute. 
I thought we lost. I didn't know if that was me or you or me, you or me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But that, now we say this, right? But now we, we've been talking about all the states that we've been looking to get legalized this this year, right? And we're, we there's quite a few. We're seven or eight, right? Um, it looks like three right now have rejected legalization, right? So now we're we out. Three. One of them, we're having like you know, like ten at the starting line, and they're all going. And you're like, oh, the first one's out. Oh, this is Maryland's out. Oh, Kansas is out. Oh, Hawaii's out. Um, but you know what? I still leave seven in. And when you know, it's much better to see them not make a legislative crossover than to get to there and find they don't have the votes and lose. Uh, you know, not making the crossover, there's still momentum there. It's all right, guys, let's go. You know, we're going to make it through the next year. It keeps activists, you know, excited. It keeps oh, the momentum yeah. going. It keeps donations flowing in, which unfortunately is important to legalization efforts. Um, you know, so that getting there and then having a vote and losing, that's incredibly detrimental to a state's progress. That will often slow things for years. That will, you know, Arizona being a great example. Um, so I would much rather see them not make a crossover deadline and be able to come back the following year stronger and better than to lose a vote in the legislature and, you know, maybe have to wait for the next cycle uh, to make it. So, you know, uh, the only one that I think really surprised people were Maryland. Maryland, I think, was one of the top three that people thought had a real good chance of uh, making it in 2021. Uh, but I'm telling you, if not, you know, now it'll almost be guaranteed to be next year. Their medical program made almost 500 million uh, last year, which was the sales in Massachusetts was about 500 million for adult use. So if their medical program is making half a billion, you know, imagine what adult use would be. Uh, unless like everybody in the state of Maryland has a medical card. I really don't know. And adult <laughs> use wouldn't make that much of a difference. Um, right. You know, and that, that's an amazing number. Uh, and I can guarantee you we'll see. We'll see legalization next year there. But, right, you know, the states that still have it going are pretty, you know, we still got it going in New York, obviously close. North Dakota, um, Rhode Island. So, you know, yeah, New, New Mexico, Mexico. Although I've heard that New Mexico is uh, may not hit it. And then we'll Delaware and Kansas, right? So right, right, right. Kansas is still in the running. Wyoming is what was that? Wyoming's one that, yeah. Wyoming, which you know, which I think was a surprise. Everybody see him in the running, and then I don't think it's you know. It's, well, again, not making crossover just means that you know the legislature, legislative bodies have not worked out all the wrinkles yet. Mm. Not the end of the world for the legislation. You know that again, it, it keeps it alive for the next session. Generally, it keeps it. You know, it keeps momentum behind it. So, like I said, much rather would see that than a negative, you know, than a no vote from the legislature. Tammy's back. Tammy, I was going to ask you really quick while we were talking about all this fun political stuff, and I, I don't know how you feel about politics or anything, but I'm sure you, know, you have a general interest in all this. Is, is You know, you're a New York resident, right? And, and obviously you're in this industry. You you are on that threshold of, of a legalized market. How do you feel about everything? And what do you think that, that they're missing that, that you as a New York resident need uh something like this you know moving forward oh oh no we lost her oh no i really want to hear her opinion on that i know uh, i just kind of do too as a former new yorker myself <laughs> right well i mean it's interesting because I, I, as i think we've seen a lot with new york there's been a real contentious battle between like the grassroots people and the politicians and you know even just the regular growers community because you know we're talking about home grow you know, personal growth has always been an issue there. And I'm, I and I haven't read the full article, but I think I wanted to say I read an article the other day that they said they're going to throw the home grow in with this. That's been a this big thing. point of contention in New York. I know it's been home grow. Cuomo was just absolutely anti home grow because yeah. the big corporations don't want home grow. They don't want you to be able to grow your home. No, 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 no. Get that illegal. You want your weed, you got to come to our dispensary. Buy your weed, you know. In New York politics, man. I mean, you got to think New York's a country. New York's a country <laughs> in terms of its GP, uh, GP and in terms of its population. You know, it is it is as large as a European nation. And so <laughs> they, uh, all many, they're legislating. You think Vermont's bad, man. <laughs> That's a whole other ball game. Um, you know, and so getting anything through legislatively, this is why Cuomo was so intent on getting it through as a budget, uh, you know, part of the budget. That has to be approved. Um, and that's, I know for years, he thought that's the only way we're ever going to get this through. We're never going to get it through the legislature because they're never going to be able to agree uh, because there's just too many interests, you know, and then you've got the huge, huge, huge chasm between New York City and the rest of the state. 
um, which is like night and day in yeah, terms right. of priorities, in terms of politics, in terms of everything. Everything, and right? Economics. You know, it's, you, like, it's like it's like Pennsylvania in the Amish section almost. And no offense to people in New York, but it's just a, it's a, it's it's, it's, oh, so it's just no judgment or you know another offense. It's just two different worlds. Yes. You, know, you get up north, <laughs> north of the Bronx, north of about 189th Street, and it's just like that's it. Um, you're you're in a totally different world. Albany and New York City are you know light years apart, so they you have that dynamic as well. Um, you know, you have representatives that have agendas in New York City that are just 180 degrees in opposition of what legislatures from Syracuse and Rochester and Buffalo are looking at. Right. Uh, the concerns, yeah. the, you know, uh, so that creates a very difficult legislative dynamic. But that all being said, it looks like they're getting this shit together. Um, yeah. Real, real, real positive things coming out in the last few days. And a lot of these issues that we didn't think we were going to get passed. And that could be now the legislature seeing Cuomo losing all of his political capital and good chance to be out the door soon, which honestly he should be. Mm -hmm. uh, any chief executive that demonstrates that poor decision-making and that, uh, you know, I mean, it just, it boggles the mind that in this day and age, anybody would be that <laughs> horrific. I, I mean, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you touch female coworkers? How do you think that that's in any way, shape, or form acceptable these days? Did you get the memo? <laughs> like, right, the haven't you been paying the attention everywhere. to our culture? What, what flew 15 years ago, you know, and it never should have done it then, and it's certainly not done it now. And to have your hands on women that are 40 years, you're I mean, you work. I, 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 just, as a professional myself, it just blows the mind how anybody, and that demonstrates what atrocious, you know, decision making he has. His judgment is severely impaired, and you should not be the governor. So hopefully the legislature can do it. So I'm really, you know, yeah. I'm really hopeful. If there's an issue with any of this, obviously, you know, there's no effect on this this bill or, or, or this moving forward technically at all, correct? Um, what do you mean? The, the, the scandals that he's going through? Right. Well, so if, if, if Cuomo is removed during the middle of this, uh, who would be the next tentative governor who would be the one that would be the, the final say on this bill? I, you know, it's killing me. I don't know her name. The lieutenant governor of the state. Uh, I forget her name right now. Um, and I, I honestly, I don't know much about her at all. But, you know, how politics works is, you know, it's all about political capital. It's all about momentum. It's all about having allies and being able to horse trade and this for that. When you're doing anything through a legislative process, it's all about compromise. And because the legislature was so gridlocked, everyone was looking at Cuomo, who a year ago was, they were talking about him as a possible, a possible presidential candidate. In the yeah. middle of the COVID, he was doing his daily COVID briefings, you know, and, you know, compared to Trump, he just looked like an absolute god. I mean, this guy could speak in full sentences. He listens to scientists. Oh, my God. Um, you know, well, it turns out he's not a complete scumbag, too. So now it has to be done legislatively. Even if a, a lieutenant governor was to come in and become governor, that, you know, that person is untested. They have no political capital. Nobody owes them anything. They don't owe anybody anything. They're a relatively newcomer. Lieutenant governor isn't exactly a uh, integral part of the administration. Um, kind of the best job in the world, actually. <laughs> you know, paid a lot of money to do absolutely nothing. But you know, and they're not going to, you know, they're not going to come in with a, you know, with a strong agenda. And if it is, it's certainly not going to involve cannabis. It's going to involve COVID recovery. Uh, so we really, at this point, it needs to be the legislature that does it. It's kind of the New York legislature or it's not going to happen. Mm. All right. All right, I believe it. Um, unfortunately, we lost Tammy to oh, there so somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but kind of bummed. I know, well, I know she, before she said she had really wonky internet service, so hopefully it's just a, a combination of internet service, but I'll keep an eye on her for popping back in. But another thing I want to talk to her and you guys about um, was the FDA. You know, here we go again. You know, a couple of days ago, and I know, Sherry, you had shared this, so this, this should be a concern to you to you on, on, on another level as well, right? Is, you know, they're, they're continuing to warn companies for legally selling over-the-counter CBD products for pain relief, right? It's just all labeling, correct? I mean, we're talking about this, you know, Justin, you know, he actually brings it up in a, in, you know, our train of the week video. And this is going to be a unique question for you, Tim, because, you know, how do dispensaries get around this? Because, you know, in our video, Justin actually talks about the, the, the container that was supplied to him from the company that gave him the cannabis was 
awesome he said it was like full full of all everything you could want all the terpenes all the knowledge you could ever want is on that label is that against fda policies one of the most difficult questions we get when it comes to labeling and we do a lot of label reviews uh for cbd products for any cannabinoid hemp based uh derivatives is it can i say pain relief Mm. Uh, that's i mean that is about as on the line as it comes you know because what you can't do is make medical claims all right well what does that mean in order to understand what it means we need to look at what's trying to be prevented and what the fda is trying to prevent through all of this is people with medical conditions foregoing medical treatment instead going to a non-tested, non-FDA approved product for, you know, in lieu of traditional medical treatment. So if it, you say this cures cancer, if you say this cures diabetes or arthritis or athlete's foot, if it claims to cure a disease and it's not FDA approved, that is a huge violation. I'm sorry, Sherry, you look like you wanna jump in, please. Yes, I wanted to ask you a question. So this is what I learned too, and just tell me if I'm correct. According to the FDA, only FDA approved medicines can make claims to cure, treat, or prevent a disease. That's absolutely correct. Okay, so let that sink in, everyone. <laughs> which is which is how many guys, right? What, two or three? But when you talk about pain relief, this relieves pain. Right. Mm. Is pain a medical condition? Or pain is, is, it, disease, is right? it, you know, it, it, is it chronic pain? Is chronic pain being a condition? pain being a symptom can it cure a symptom can it address a symptom you know we get sleep too a sleep aid you know is lack of sleep a condition well i guess if you know under certain circumstances or is it a symptom can you say this helps put you to sleep and if you know at first we were saying yeah i think pain relief is okay we're actually backing away from that a little bit and trying, you know, and you even call sleep. it relief. It'll relief. bring you relief. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It'll bring you comfort. Ooh, but close, it's tricky right? because we don't have clear guidelines. And this is the, the lack of FDA movement on, you know, getting shit together and figuring out rules and regs for this. It, it, it's dicey, um, you know, and we always say, you know, listen, again, it's the spectrum of risk you're taking. If you want no risk, do not say pain reliever. Do not say sleep aid. Do not say anything that could even mild, you know, say calming. Calming probably is okay. You know, relaxing, <laughs> zen, bliss. You know, these are terms that are, you know, you're not going to run into FDA issues with. When you say this relieves pain, you might. Mm -hmm. You know, for a solve though. But now what we're seeing is because menthol is a approved FDA uh, nutraceutical or whatever that classification is that you can say menthol relieves pain. If you put some menthol in your product, now you can say it relieves pain. It has CBD in it, but you're not saying the CBD is what's relieving pain. It's the menthol or it's the, you know, whatever FDA approved substance is now in your product, which is letting you make that claim. So if you're willing to put in some menthol, you're willing to put in another one of these FDA uh, approved uh, ingredients, you can make those claims that have been validated for that ingredient. So that's kind of one workaround if people are willing to reformulate. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's, we get that all the time. Can I put pain relief? Can I, and everybody's right. You're like, oh, you're so close to the line and you just... But then what happens, you know, if we're talking about Vermont producers who are producing a thousand or two thousand units a month and are selling it to local stores, that's not as big of a, you know, that, that we're not as concerned about it. But when you start wholesaling 10,000 units out of state to New York or to California, when you start to get multiple accounts, you know, one of a couple of our businesses have gotten up to a million dollars in sales. Um which is great to see starting from literally nothing. You know, that's when it, you could get that FDA letter. And if you get that FDA letter, um, now you got to pull all your product. Now you got to reach down your labels. And when you're talking about that scale, that's an incredible expense. So it, it, it sometimes pays to take the high road and just say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to leave this off. We also try to tell our clients, you know what, people at this point who are going to buy CBD products know what CBD products do. Uh, for the most part, you know, you're not telling them anything they don't really know. I mean, sure, you want people to understand it, and we're still in an educational phase, and it's still growing customer base. But is it worth it? 
isn't worth it to, you know, come afoul of the FDA. And it's not, you know, the FDA is the one saying don't do it. It's the FTC. It's the Federal Trade Commission that comes yeah. down. And they've got an actual prosecutorial wing. I mean, that's what they do. They prosecute cases. Yes. So the FDA doesn't have prosecutors, but the FTC does. The and F the FDA uses Trump. the FTC as their hammer. <laughs> you know, you don't, you just don't want to be part of any sort of federal agency's investigations. It's just it never works out well for you. Yeah, so, you don't normally win those, right? I mean, uh, you get to that perfect. level, you don't normally win it. We've seen a lot of recent lawsuits uh, in the millions, though. I mean, like you said, Tim, if the government's involved, this isn't going to be like a you know fifteen hundred dollar little fine, slap on the wrist. This There's a lot of crappy lawyers out there who see this, who see you making a medical claim, and then all of a sudden they're suing you saying their client, you know, forgo medical treatment for your product and they died, God forbid, or they got worse or they got, you know, whatever it is, and they're suing you for $18 million. Mm -hmm. um, without saying names, we saw kind of a similar lawsuit, not exactly, but and one of the really good labs and processing companies here in Vermont um, was one of these kind of crap lawsuits that was brought by a lawyer <laughs> you know puts, a, puts my profession in a really bad light but there's a lot of you know shady people um who was advantage lawsuit that they just jumped on top of and uh, one of our really good companies here one of our really good cannabis companies uh, had a file for bankruptcy and was being liquidated because of one of these suits so it can happen um and uh you know that's 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 also a not a good thing so if Very. it's a matter of not pushing the limit and kind of pulling back a little bit sometimes yeah. that pays it just don't this it's it's a it's it's a word right it's it's, it's well hopefully this year we see fda uh right the, you know the classification should be coming down the pipeline mm -hmm. uh, and with any luck cbd and cannabinoids will be uh classified as a nutraceutical or supplement There'll be clear guidelines on how to use them. They'll be able to be added into foods. They'll be held as generally regarded as safe. And then we'll at least have the rules of how, what to abide by. Because right now, we don't. Right now, it's kind of a... Hmm? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's unclassified, you know? So we don't know what exactly needs to be done. And um, the, the enforcement's so arbitrary uh, that it, it's, you know, it's, it's the wrong person going to the wrong website, seeing the wrong freaking thing down at the right. FDA office. And that's all of a sudden right. they're getting warning letters. It's a roll of dice, right? Enforcement action. Now, what about using other compounds though? Like, I mean, obviously, you know, we're talking about the CBD, but I mean, this, this, this does include all derivatives of cannabis, correct? No, it definitely does not. Um, and you can tell that, you know, the great example is Delta 8, uh, which I think is, you know, a but that's problem is when you get something like Delta 8 and you get people trying to shoot loopholes with a substance that theoretically could be, psycho, you know, have a psychoactive effect that can then turn people against ever you know it, it just it creates this dynamic of mistrust um this is why i've kind of got some personal issues with the da the way it's being sold now the way it's being produced and they're trying to crank it into convenience stores and sell it for as long as they possibly can knowing it'll, you know and there's a good chance that type of thing will become illegal that's, that's that will what was that that's irresponsible honestly yeah you know and it, it's it's a good and the thing is, it's a good product it has the ability to help people great product but it is you know but it's being taken right now the samples of da are shitty that they've done you know and these kind of not really cool actors are showing crazy levels of uh delta nine um there's no real regulation about it and all it's going to take is one or two kids to get a hold of a da product that was made poorly that was not lab tested that was just cranked out to make a profit that maybe has way too much delta nine or you know god only knows and the process by which they make delta eight when it's done properly in a lab it is a very safe process but it's a very difficult and process that requires skilled technicians skilled chemists and good equipment Unfortunately, it's being made now in basement labs that basically bath up crank. Um, in some cases, they're just they're, they're diluting CBD with bleach yeah. to pull, you know, and it's it, it's a horrific because there's no regulation. We have no yeah. standards, so all it takes is one or two of these products that are being made on the fast and the you know the profit train and not really caring about quality or safety um, to make some kids sick. And now we've got what we had with the vape crisis, which is the entire industry painted with this broad, bad brush. 
And uh, that's so when we talk about other, you know, kind of compounds, cannabinoids, everyone needs to be treated on its own. And we need to have the testing, we need to have standards, and they need to be made in a way that the consumer is protected from the bad actors, from the profit only actors. Um, Again, this will all come with regulation. You know, we're at that kind of impasse right now uh, where, you know, it is a little bit of the Wild West. Uh, you know, now people are talking about T uh, THCV, which supposedly is uh, more psychoactive than uh, Delta 9, uh, Delta 10 THC. They're looking for any loophole around the ban on selling Delta 9. People want to make money. But if you're hurting people and you're cutting corners to do so, you're part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. Yeah. Yeah, but we, and we see that a lot. Oh, here's Tammy back again. Let's get her back on so we can get. <laughs> oh, did we get her? Oh, no. We admitted her. Let's see if we can get her back in here real quick. Hello's back. <laughs> Yay. Tammy's back. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no the problem. Just glad you're back. Yeah, this is. I, I don't know how long we're going to keep me. I'm having severe internet issues and I was just on the, the phone with the internet company and I just hung up on them. I'm like, look, I got to go finish this meeting. I'll call you later. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Well, we're glad to have you back. We were just talking about uh, like Delta eight, uh, Delta 10, you know, the laws, the FDA regulations, uh, all these fun things that we kind of all touch base about earlier. But I think when we lost you, we were asking you about, you know, New York and how you felt about what was going on there. Yeah. Um, especially with what we heard about today going on. I mean, what, what are your concerns as a, you know, a resident? You know I mean? Obviously, you know, me and Tim, you know, we just dived into the fact that, you know, within this bill, there's a lot of different areas in New York that are vastly different than other areas that really have different needs. You know what I mean? So the outline is going to look very different yeah. from New York state to obviously Long Island. Right. Uh, but you know, being, being in this industry and, and, and being looking at it from an herbalist point of view and, and, and a farmer's kind of point of view, how, how do you feel about this? Yeah, I, I'm not up to date with which version of the law, but my consistent con concern is about people being able to grow their six to 12 plants oh, yeah. and having that be right. And yeah. no matter what, whatever money making scheme they're going to come up with. And then the other one is I know that there's supposed to be some sort of cottage industry opt in for people and and making, uh, you know, people of color and women, giving them seats at the table. And there's all this talk of it. And I'm just not, you know, I'll believe it when I see it kind of thing. Right. <laughs> um, so that's the frustration for me. The other frustration is as a hemp farmer now, they, we aren't even allowed to legally sell flowers. Right. And that was taken away, right? I, I don't even understand that. The hemp rolls are horrible. You know, so, horrific. yeah. It, and and then the other thing is that we have until I think it's September 1st to have the old rules as a hemp farmer. So if, if the total THC is less, um, I'm sorry, no, that's where they're going. After September 1st, it's if your flowers have more than 0.3% total THC, they're hot. Mm -hmm. But they're like, okay, but until it, the old rule used to be if you had below 0.3% Delta 9, you were good. And they, so New York is like, okay, we'll, we'll accept that until September 1st. I'm like, oh, come on. And I'm just not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to legally grow for the feds because I, the, all the rules and the background checks and forget it. I don't want it. Okay, I mean, the only, the, the one piece of thing we can hope is that there's a new farm bill next year. The, 28, yeah. the 2018 farm bill is already three years old. You still don't, you know, exactly. talking about like it happened yesterday. There'll be a farm bill in 2020. Yeah. And with the new yeah. administration, hopefully we get some more rational, uh, you know, rules in the new yeah. farm bill. Yeah, mm -hmm. Keep our yeah I would. The industry will get crushed. Exactly. THC standard of point three. It's impossible. Right. Yeah. It's well, I, it, it's so, yeah. I mean, we're, we're preaching to the choir, right? Yeah. It's like, if we could just have 1%. <laughs> One percent yep. total THC, great. Can live with it. But that's what yep. we're talking and about. And then let us. Well, yeah. And then let us grow. So in New York, my biggest concern is the medical. When they rolled out the medical program, you, like you said, you got to have twenty million dollars or a facility mm -hmm. up and running. So it was all that cronyism, and I, I just don't. 
uh, here's my cynic. I don't believe that someone like me is going to be able to grow wreck flowers. I just don't think that they're going to let us little people do it. Come over to Vermont. You can do it here. Thousand square foot craft pro exactly. license, twenty five hundred bucks. Exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, my brother, my brother, you know, he's just like, yeah, they're going to raise the number of flower plants. I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> come hang out in Vermont for a few years. You love yeah, come home. Here. Come on home. Oh, right, come back to Essex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of hope about the accessibility of the industry in Vermont. Thank, thankfully, the yep. one license limit is really going to be a huge help. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I've been on conversations a lot lately about the industry, so we're looking forward to it. Hopefully, you know, it, hopefully we can get it going. You know, I mean, we're we're facing a few struggles here as well. I mean, I think every state's going to. Uh, social equity definitely needs to be something on everybody's plate. But as you can see, I think every state's struggling with that, and then how to make that reparation. So. You know, obviously, yep. you know, how, I mean, it sounds simple, but like literally, how do you make a reparation? How do you, how do you make it right? How, what do, what do you do? How do you, you know, how do you go forward with that kind of, uh, uh, you know, let everybody get involved? You know, the biggest thing, like you said, it's the money, right? Like, even if they, if there is social equity, how the, how can somebody afford the license? We talk about it in mass. It's like the licensures. You have to have a building. You have to have all these things going. So now you, you, you have first and last months. These buildings are commercial buildings. They're not cheap licensures the access to being having a license are in the millions so that that takes out a huge percentage of our said the 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 market that's been doing it for years right we we, we can't exactly that, right uh, it's, it's yep. not like you know you can't afford it there's there's most of these people because we are conscious about the plant they're committed to the plan they have integrity they don't sell out they, they, the corporate mentality is not there for for a lot of, especially herbalist minded people otherwise you you know what i mean you wouldn't be where you are right um right so how do you survive that and, and that's like what you said you know hopefully we get the home grow the home grow hopefully gets in there because if that doesn't pass and that's going to be the, one of the biggest issues one percent would be amazing and hopefully the fda and like you said the new farm bill actually addresses this um, i don't know if there's any talk or discussion about it, but i know globally there's been a lot of talk about that one percent rule and in vermont tim don't, don't we have that as yeah, we have a you know Department of Agriculture that is basically just giving the USDA a giant middle finger, um, <laughs> where you know when it comes to everything, hemp. I mean, twenty five dollar up to this year license to grow as much hemp as you want anywhere you want with virtually no regulation, um, and even now it's still you know a fraction of the cost. Uh, you know, and Stephanie Smith of our Department of Ag runs a hemp program, just amazing. They're going to push the you know as long as they possibly can, sticking to the Delta Nine standard. Um, and you know, the total THC of 1%, uh, standard. So what's going to, you know, they keep extending it and they keep extending it. They keep taking every advantage to extend it out. Supposedly this, as of this, you know, fall, it will change. We're hoping that they manage to kick the can again. What we're hoping to see is that an extension of the pilot program is permitted until the new farm bill comes out. You know, they've basically been kicking it down the road and it doesn't make sense for them not to kick the can down the road yet in, you know, another nine or 10 months until the, uh, the new farm bill is issued. So that's what we're keeping our fingers crossed. Um, because, I mean, it's just unrealistic to think that the amp industry can work with a 0.3% total standard. Because even if you got a cultivar, even if they were able to genetically, which I believe in enough time, they could probably come up with a CBD high, THCA low enough after a lot of selective genetics and breeding and working to, you know, phenol hunting the chance of it going over because once it's over in a lot of jurisdictions, one test that shows, okay, now you're a point four total and now you got to destroy crop, mm -hmm. you know, like we're seeing in Massachusetts or, you know, I mean, that risk, what farmer is going to devote the time, resources, money, and energy into growing these crops that have such a low rate that even if they're supposed to stay there, even if just one goes over, oh, boom, done, your, your entire investment's gone. And if it goes over by a little more, eh, maybe we'll charge it criminally too. You know, who's going to take that right. risk? risk? You know, it's just not worth it. It's just not, it could be on a million dollars a pound. It's still not worth it if you're going to risk losing your farm, losing, you know, your freedom, being fine, losing your crop. I mean, <laughs> does that make any sense at all? So, uh, you know, if they intend the hemp industry to move forward, they will not be able to enact these, you know, these interim final rule provisions. So we'll see what happens, you know, and keep our fingers crossed because hemp is just getting started. 
Everyone loves the CBD, but that's a fraction of what this industry is. In oh, fact, all right. cannabinoids are a fraction of what this industry can be. What this industry can be is hempcrete and replacing plastics and replacing, you know, these just a pollutive, horrible, you know, we, if anybody caught John Oliver's uh, uh, segment last week on the plastic industry and how recycling is really kind of a sham and it's all ending up in the ocean, it we really have a chance is. to have a natural product that can replace all of this. And that's yeah. hemp. And um, that's where the future is. And if they impose these ridiculous arbitrary standards, we're going to kill it before it's even out of the womb. Oh my God, Tim, thank you for bringing that up. Because that, that's my one question. Like, what, what, what do we have for options? I mean, you know, countrywide, statewide, New York. I mean, most of these, most of these states make you burn your crop if you run over. I mean, you just said a whole other industry, Tim, that I was going to reflect to is, you know, can we utilize these farmers products that are just barely over the threshold up to another threshold to be utilized in another industry that's going to be not that that's not going to be a consumable industry whether it's fibers whether it's uh perfumes lotions terp you know like just grabbing the terpenes for other things that we we need to utilize i mean where where are these industries grabbing these things from you know i mean is it is it isn't this a viable solution to to help keep a market going because like you said if if you have an issue you burn slightly over they burn your crop your whole, your whole. Some states, okay. you know, some states allow for mitigation. I think the, the first uh, version of the USDA rule said no mitigation allowed. Now there might be some mitigation, but states can choose like Massachusetts, you know, and again, and if you just have particularly hot summer, you know, the conditions are just right. And that THC happens despite a little tiny bit. You're talking about the THCA. You're talking, you know, I mean, this hasn't been converted. We don't, you know, but if that happens to go over, the chant, I mean, it's burning your crops bad enough. Being arrested for a felony? I mean, yeah. we're talking about states, probably not New York, thankfully, especially if you're white, but there are definitely states where people have been, their homes raided for an eighth of marijuana. Can you imagine a field? Law enforcement, you know, there are states where they would have a field. You would lose your property. The feds would come in and seize everything, asset forfeiture. Um, you know, and if they establish this, you know, if it's over 0.6, then it's intentional. That also is incredibly scary. That's terrifying. You do not want to be indicted federally for anything ever under any circumstances. Believe me, I'm a federal defense attorney. You do not ever <laughs> want to be in the federally indicted. So oh that, that's, you know, if this is to move forward, we need to have more sensible, rational regulation. You know, we have to remember this 0.3% and the 1%, they're all arbitrary numbers. They're all just throwing dart at a dartboard. There's no studies or scientific backing for point. Right. Point three is good, point four bad. You know, no, it was just an absolutely arbitrary picked out of the book number, uh, which bears no relation. You know, if it's under 5% THC, it's not going to get you high. <laughs> it's hemp. I don't care if it's 3% or 2% or 1.8 or, you know, it's not going to be a drug. It is a agricultural product. You know, okay, five percent, six percent, ten percent THC. Okay, now we're starting to get to the fun stuff. Um, but you know, it's does it say point three or one? It's just these arbitrary numbers, are ridiculous. Someone needs to stand up and say the emperor has no clothes. These numbers are insane. This doesn't bear any rational relation to anything, even slightly scientific. And let's get this industry going. Yeah, no, I can't like that. that. I I can't well, all right, guys, I think that's where we, we pretty much are going to have to wrap this show up. We're getting late. We still have to play our Strain of the Week segment, and we still have a book giveaway, right? So we have a couple of copies of the um, Holistic Healing Guide to Canvas book that Tammy has written, which, again, is an amazing book that everybody should have in their their stash somewhere or their collection of books, right? Um, so what we're going to do, Tammy, real quick before we go, right, and we'll, we'll sign off here. Um, Pick two. Pick pick your favorite two numbers from one to fifteen, and we'll multiply them a couple couple times here. We'll figure out who our names are. We'll announce them really quick. So you got two numbers. Okay. Yep. All right. Ready? Pick me. Pick me. <laughs> yep. Number nine. Number nine. All right. And number fifteen. There you go. All right. So Sherry Tuckus. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <Number 15. laughs> right? and, uh, Joe Carby. So Joe, I don't know if he's watching. He's usually a big fan of watching the show. If not, we'll reach out to you guys and we'll let you guys know via messenger that you guys want to book. And now Tammy, I'll get all the information. We'll figure out the details on Great. that. Um, uh, but you guys, I'm Great. really excited that 
Sherry, actually, I'm really excited that you want my nursing community. You know what I mean? We have over, yes. God, 600 cannabis nurses in the country. Mm-hmm. Guess awesome. what? You're going to get a new book to read. Right. <laughs> well, there's been a lot of amazing books Great. out there. And, you know, there's nothing better than education. And, like, for me, yeah. you know, coming from, from the herbalist, like you said, and we've talked about somebody who's, who's touched it, worked it get to know it who who is, also understands the body right because i mean that's what you went to school for so it's yeah the, yep the amount of the you know like you said the endocannabinoid system we can't say that enough especially for any medical professional anybody who's into recreational anybody who's in anything right once you start understanding that a lot of these yeah. little outlying things start changing like you know like we talk about you know indica sativas hybrids you know we talk about all these different classifications that will literally go away once you start talking about cannabinoids and and strains and and terpenes and all these different cool things like we talked about today terpene tuesday how, how fun are those right um right and, you know when we talk about overall health how much do they impact it it's, it's really amazing to learn right um and, and imagine imagine if we didn't have these grassroots movement or these or these medical movements to push campus to a level that we can actually realize what People, you know, from you know ancestral days, were right on to on 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 you know tombs and, and crazy things about the power of the plant, right? Uh, so this, this yeah. is where we, where I love the herbalism ideas. This is where I love the witchcraft. This is where I love the Egyptian times. This is where I love the ancient times. I go even further and further and further back when you hear about hemp and and the impact that cannabis had, and, and a lot of these you know empires and in different stages of uh, our evolution, right? So so. So Tammy, we have a couple couple winners now. If anybody wanted to reach out to you and and, and said, say hi, say what's up. I mean, I know you do a lot. Of, typically, you you travel a lot and you do a lot of education. But right now, with the Rona and things like we said, you know, it's it's been kind of one of those yep. strange last couple of years for us. You know, how can people reach out to you? How can people see what you're up to? Um, how can people learn more? Great. Yeah, the easiest way for people to remember is they can go info at heart stone.com. So Heartstone is our school. So if you Google Heartstone Herbal School, that'll take you to our website. Um, and I also have TammySweet.com. Uh, either way, that you'll you'll find me that way. And um, yeah, and if I'm I'm launching a big grow course that only I only advertise to my email list. I don't put it out on Facebook or any social media. So the only way to get to know about the course is either to find it on the website or get on my email list. And I'm going to do a fun webinar. I've been working all day today, putting pictures together. Now it's not as fun as your very entertaining, (laughs) lots of graphics. Mine is just like third grader. Here are some pretty pictures. (laughs) So I'm doing a seed to harvest webinar tomorrow night. And so people can do that. The other thing is um, kind of off topic a little bit, but I've been trying to decide whether I'm going to get vaccinated or not. And I reached out to two of my herbal colleagues and, and elders, uh, Jody Noe and Kat Mayer. And mm. I, I contacted them and said, hey, what do you think? And we talked for an hour. And then from that, we were like, all right, let's have a webinar where we just share w- what we just did. So we're doing that too. And, and it's not pro or con. It's just like, it really is. It was me saying, I'm not sure whether I want to get vaccinated. What's your best thinking? Mm-hmm. And from that, we decided, okay, we, we can create a place because there's a lot of questions and we'll just answer mm-hmm. from what we understand. So, and that feels like that's free. You know, it's, it's, it's our, our tithing, you know, like it's, we got to give stuff away. So yeah. yeah. Those that's are the big great, things happening now. That's a that's Sorry? a great conversation. No, that's an amazing conversation to have because I think that's you know there, there's a lot of divide there right now. You know, do I do I know? Yeah. Did I? Am I? Yep. You know, did I do the right thing? Did I, am I? If I not, you know, what I mean, especially when we come to an herbalist or a grassroots mentality, you know, we, we yep. most of most people are anti-vaxxers. You know, what I mean, I'm, you know, that's just yep. how it is. You know, what I mean, and and again, yep. healthy. We we they live lives. They you know they're part of the community and, and they're not killing and wiping out people. But, you know, there's a, there's a lot of skepticism, there's a lot of skepticalism, skepticism, skeptic, how, however we say that word uh, behind the new vaccine. So it'd be interesting to see what, what a lot of these people on your level would have to say about that. Cause I, I'd love to know your yeah. opinion on that uh, just because, you know, you, you, 
you're an herbalist. You know, you went to school. This is what you, yeah. what you know. So it's like the more, I, like I'm like you, the more I know about people's opinions, the more I'd be influenced to to try this out. You know what I mean? And I still think there's a lot of questions yeah. out there on all the vaccines. You know, I mean, how do you feel about yeah. that? Real quick. Well, we for me, to- that's why I contacted Jody Noe and Kat Mayer because they are Jody is a naturopath and Kat yeah. is, uh, you know, has heavy. Like for me, I want the science. I don't mm-hmm. want someone's opinion on YouTube. I want the science yeah. of what they understand and from there. So I, I, I say that if you're worried at all, get the vaccine. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm a young, healthy person, but I actually am. I would rather die than get the long haulers stuff. I, I just I, I battle fatigue as it is. So that in itself, like I'm just not. So my leaning right now, unless I hear otherwise, is I'll probably get the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Hmm. And I, I need to do a little more research, but that one, you know, that's that's where I'm standing. I'm going to do a lot of traveling soon. I want to see my family, my parents. I want to come home. So I'm 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 still doing research. And I, I had the excuse before that I could say, well, I wasn't it wasn't available. But New York just yesterday said anybody over 50 so that's me now i am i can get it if i want so yeah Yeah. so that's my two cents i don't know but i'm 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 learning and researching yeah i don't don't think anybody really knows at this point right i mean even even the professionals don't know it seems like every day Fauci's and all these guys have something different to say different recommendation or what their recommendation was we haven't seen that result of yet you know what i mean you remember when this all started? It was 15 days, guys, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the professionals said 15 days. Everybody in the world said 15 days. And look, look where we're at. You know what I mean? And there's still other countries that are struggling. Yeah. It's not just us. So it's, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're living in a weird world where I turn the TV on now and there's like spring break happening with no masks. I'm seeing, you know, political yeah. things happening with no masks. I'm seeing events happening with no masks. And then I see a sports game and there's like, videos in the seats i'm like what 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 is going on here you know what i mean like, yeah yeah you know what, what is normal what's going to be return to normal like what is you know legitimately like i was watching an overseas video earlier today where the, literally these these cops were beating people with sticks that were walking by without masks on literally just like wow. get your mask on like is it going to get to that point like, i hope not but um you know let's 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 hopefully we can get through this uh i thank you for your opinion again an amazing show. I love what you do. I was truly moved by you as an educator. So if anybody out there can ever get to go to any course that Tammy has any access to a part of, go do it. I mean, there, there's a bunch of educators. You, like I tell people a lot of time, the people that move me and, you know, we, we usually get them on the show, you know, uh, you know, there, there was you at that, that uh, medical conference here, my player that, you know, yeah. Rosemary Glass. I mean, obviously she's, she's just an amazing woman and, and if, if she doesn't move you, then you're not, you know, you're not in anything. <laughs> so obviously her, you know, you were one of the, one of the other ones. And then we had uh, Dr. Kevin Spellman, who who's actually been on the show yeah. with all of us. And he was another one of those guys that was absolutely amazing. Um, and just one of my, you know, ultimately moving people in, in, in the cannabis. Cause yeah. it, it opens your mind to many things. And then when you were here, like you said, you know, your endocannabinoid system was something we're all kind of learning about that point. And here, you know, here you are making it, and then I, I forget, I think we're talking about legs and calves and, and weird things. If I remember right, it was a fun one. <laughs> um, but, you know, for me being an athlete, you know, I can relate and I get it. You know what I mean? And like, you know, one of our biggest stigmas is, you know, the, the athletes in the, in the world that are on that use cannabis. You know what I mean? We look at Michael Phelps, yeah. who, you know, yeah. did, you know, Olympic gold medalist, right. Multiple times. And he openly admits using cannabis a lot. Like you said, the NFL players, boxers are now, you know, just lighting up at weigh-ins and, and, and showing their admittance to be using cannabis. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, five years ago, even recently, some of these players are getting suspended and, and had faced, you know, fines and, and things like that. So how, how we make the repar- rep- reparations, right? So anyways, guys, don't yeah. don't go anywhere. If you can, we'll come back and wrap it up one more time. But we're going to play the strain of the week so we can get out of here. This is Justin C., the strain of the week. It's another Kush strain. You know, I think Justin likes these Kush strains. Uh, but Justin the Bug Grower gives us another major strain. It's a quickie, so don't, don't worry about it too much. Uh, but here it is, guys. It is Mountain 
Kush. It looks amazing. I, 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 I really, I love Kush too. So I really can't blame them. But here's the guys. Don't go anywhere in the weeds. Train of the week. Hi guys, my name is Justin, I'm with The Bug Grower, and welcome to this week's Strain of the Week, brought to you by In the Weeds Prohibition Talk Radio, The Green Nurse, and Vermont Cannabis Solutions. This week's strain is Kush Mountains by Cannabiotics. We're going to open this guy up and give you the full rundown as to why this might be the best strain for you. So check us out, continue to watch, and learn. For those new to the industry or new to smoking or new to cannabis, uh, Kush, anything with Kush comes from the dry, arid mountain ranges that separate Pakistan and Afghanistan. So if you think about the Hindu Kush mountain range and you think about this strain, you're not far. There's nothing really that separates the two. I mean, this is really where it comes from. Kush Mountain is a... uh, very high indica dominant hybrid. It's a mixture between Blue Flame OG and White Walker OG. And White Walker OG is a very common one for medical patients. It creates uh, pain assistance, helps you with stress, anxiety, and insomnia. And that's where this strain, Kush Mountains, really gets its effects from. On the other side, uh, you have Blue Flame OG, which is a very heavy uh, strain used for pain relief. So they really wanted to give users the ability to relax, be comfortable. Uh, If they suffer from chronic pain, this is a strain to use. A really cool thing about this packaging, too, from Cannabiotics, is that they actually give you the anticipated effects uh, for smoking this. So you have, you know, it's supposed to be relaxing, soothing, and sedating. So this is really good for sleep. It's really good for stress. Uh, I know that during my day, I am running between a number of different things, and sometimes my brain kind of gets lost in the, in the stress of it. So I can't lock down one particular task at a time. And that is why a lot of people use this strain. It helps them to kind of zone in as to the task at hand, and it creates kind of a soothing, relaxing feel for it. So if you're in a high stress job, this is a good strain for you. I am going to go a little bit more into complementing the packaging that this company puts out because it gives you the the, the percentages. I mean, it's an 80% indica, a 20% sativa, and it gives you like a really in-depth breakdown as to what is going on within this strain. And it allows users or medical patients to be able to identify things that they might want specifically in this strain or not. So, so the smell of this is extremely potent. It's not King Louis-esque, uh, but it does permeate pretty quick. Uh, It's not shy about its smell. So with that being said, you know that this is going to have a very strong effect. Um, One of the things that I like when I look at these actual uh, buds is just the way that the crystals look on them. I mean, this is a very, very crystallized uh, strain. And we're going to have better photos and better video uh, for you. But this guy is really, really heavy. Um, the buds are smaller, but they're they're loose. And they look very healthy. I mean, this is a very pretty looking uh, bud structure. I do like this a lot. 
Um, yeah. Let's smoke and see the effects. So, we're gonna give you, there it is. So you can see how this bud looks. Um, I like it a lot. I like how the uh, really cloudy trichomes um, co contrast kind of the deep green nature of the bud itself. So it actually makes certain areas pop and the little amber hairs add another like distinct feature to it. Um, I think it's a really cool looking strain, I do. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of leaf material still on this, but I think that it looks, it's, you know, I, I can't i can't really complain. I mean, I've had some pretty shaggy weed and, you know, it's, it's not, not a big issue to me. Um, I do like this strain. It does look pretty. I can't not say it doesn't. Um, and I like that it's got the right level of moisture. I mean, a lot of buds that I've, I've smoked, you know, it's can be very dry. I don't like when I'm breaking it up and then it just like shatters into crumbs in my hand. So having this here and, and just the nice moisture level is a really, it's a just it's a really solid plant. This is a really, really nice strain. So. So after trying this strain, uh, this is a very heavy high. This is really, really heavy. And that's something that Cannabiotics is known for, uh, really high potency uh, cannabis. I would not smoke this out of, you know, a bong or even just roll a whole blunt of this. I mean, I had, uh, I use my, my regular just like hand pipe and uh, it, it, it did the job, I mean, it took three hits, but within that time, I was coughing profusely, and I was like sweating. And it's a very strong strain, it's a good strain if, you know, that happens, I always say so. But it might be too intense for some people. Um, as terms, as, in, as far as the effects go, my head is very, it's, it's, a, almost, it's a really strong head high. Um, I am grinning, but I also feel like my face is, is kind of like weird. I'm like this, so. Uh, <laughs> see, there's that. But I do feel like this is a very good one for relaxing. Um, I'm not buzzing, I'm not everywhere. You know, I have other things I gotta do today, but even on this, even today, like with this strain, I don't have really any problem focusing in the task at hand. It's actually kind of helped me lock in uh, into the rest of my day and see how, you know, kind of function normally. Would I smoke this at work? No. Um, if, again, this is one for the house. Another thing that I noticed too was that the strain gets sweeter the more you smoke it. So my first hit uh, is very earthy and a very strong OG flavor. Um, and then the more I, I kept hitting it, the more it became a uh, almost vanilla-y sweet, I would say. So that that is that strain. Um, that's the the effects that I really got and that I'm experiencing right now. Um, I, I am thirsty. I am really, really thirsty. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, it's it's a good one for relaxing. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty chill. I don't like, it's always funny when I do these because like, but prior to me smoking, I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know, all that. But this is really just taking that kind of, I don't even want to be like a TV person right now. And I feel like that's kind of an effect that is good. It's positive. Um, I don't think I, I, I belong in show business if I'm going to be smoking this all the time. But it is a very good strain. I do like it. I do like it. I think it's funny the way that I feel. So it is good. I like it a lot. Um, very good for, uh, pain relief. Uh, it's really just like mellowed me out. I don't have like, the kinetic energy that I usually have 
Uh, but I am more focused. I am more, you know, in a box. Like, this is one task, this is the next task, this is the next task. And that makes me feel better about my day, because usually when things pile on like that, I have a lot of anxiety. And, uh, and, you know, sometimes it's hard to get the next thing done because you're stressing about the next thing while you're doing the task that you, you need to do in the meantime. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I feel a little bit more comfortable with my day. I feel like I can kind of uh, manage it a little bit better using the strain. So, yeah, that is, that is the predominantly beneficial product of this. Um, anxiety is really, really the strong suit for those looking to, uh, to calm themselves down a little bit. So that's the strain, guys. Uh, remember to check out the Bud Grower at thebudgrower.com. All our links are down below. Uh, don't forget to check out The Green Nurse, Vermont Cannabis Solutions, and In the Weeds Prohibition Talk Radio. Uh, these guys are great. And right now we have a deal going on with In the Weeds where if you look at our kits and you want to buy one, a kit or a soil reload, uh, you can use the promo code Prohibition10. And so if you use that code, and that's a specific that's a specific code for the bud grower within the weeds. Uh, if you use that, you'll save a bunch of money on a product that's gonna save you more at retail. So if you guys have any questions as well, we are available. Uh, we are always open to someone uh, inquiring within uh, the green space. And for first time growers, we help you start from start to finish. So if you, uh, if you want to check us out, absolutely go ahead and click the link. Uh, if you want to buy a kit, don't forget to use Prohibition 10. And if you have any other questions, we're happy to ask. So, so long. We're going to play you out with a bunch of uh, screenshots of the strain, some nice high quality photos. So you'll be able to uh, get a good peek at it. Happy smoking. Happy growing. All right, we're back, and you guys are still here. All right, great. Uh, another so show's getting cute. late. We went over. We started a little late. It was fun. Um, it's always great having an herbalist on the show because it gives you a really different mentality to an approach to medicine, right? Um, especially when we talk about, you know, like we were talking about the Terpene Tuesday in your segment today. It's, it's you know, traditional European medicine versus you know the herbalist mentality, right? So it's not always the same. It's you know sometimes oh. it's. The other thing too, Joe, the herbalist mentality, she brings in a lot of spirituality, right? Which, um, which is really, really cool, you know? So the spiritual aspects of cannabis and plant medicine and how it can work on not only our mind and our body, but our spirits as well. So I really loved her segment. You know, she's a really, really brilliant woman and what she's bringing to our communities is needed. That's just, it's exactly what's needed. So I'm right. really glad we had an opportunity to meet her, to learn from her and to win her book. I was going to say, you want a book. So you're going to be able to yeah, read, nice review it. I manifested it, right? The plant wanted me to have it. <laughs> that was amazing. I just wrote out a bunch of names and a bunch of numbers and just was like, just pick it. So she, that was totally legit. No one knew, right? Um, but again, guys, I want to thank you guys for another great show. Uh, a lot of great conversations we had tonight, um, especially when it comes to what's going on in politics especially when it's coming on to our health. Again, if you guys want to check out the can of talk segment, we'll have it ready for you guys tomorrow. I apologize. Uh, just 
you know thing after thing after thing we got a little behind and it was a bit it's a big it's a big segment so um i don't really want to cut it up too much so you know we figured we throw in a turp tuesday here once in a while because they're fun right i mean who didn't like that come on that was great no it really was great <laughs> <laughs> sure, and those, are, and those are fun videos you know i mean that we have for you guys so uh, one thing I want to do is make sure that we signed off correctly. Thank you, Tammy, for coming on. Um, again, guys, check out the Holistic Healing Guide to Cannabis. It was, it was, it's a great, it's a great book. Like I said, it's got really high regards and claims for many huge people in our industry. Um, and check out what she does, her school, the Hearthstone Center of uh, Earth Essentials in New York. So I know right now, like she said, she's closed right now, but she does do a interactive educational course where that's really cool. So. Um, Essex born, it feels like family, you know what I mean? She did do the Rosemary Gladstar School, which is here in Vermont as well. So um, amazing woman, a lot of fun. And again, guys, if I said, if you ever see her speaking or edu- or teaching in any sort of class or event near you, go check it out. It's definitely worth worth the uh, your time. So again, you guys have a couple of shows coming on. At least Sherry does tonight, right? Yep. I have a show tonight with a nurse practitioner from Hawaii. And she's got a really great story and she's going to talk about all the culture, you know, and how, you know, what her and her family has been through and how she has moved through, stepped up, stepped out into the cannabis space and is making a difference in Hawaii. So she's, it's going to be a great show. That should be a great show because I mean, again, Hawaii is one of those names that we brought up again today, guys, that didn't get legalization pushed through. So it's going to be interesting to hear, like you said, what they're going through, especially as a patient. So we're going to definitely have to tune in for that. Timmy, thank you again. I love you, man. Um, we just I found out mid-show we just got approved for our PPP loan. Finally. Uh, so like on cloud nine, right? Congratulations. Uh, yeah, next week. Hey. Congratulations. Um, yeah, congratulations. that was really great news because it's been two months we've been waiting on that. And they declined denied us because we have cannabis in our name. So I had to write a whole legal appeal and submit it to the SBA. And it's been like eight weeks, and we don't do, you know, it's like but yeah, I just found out that came through. And what that means, not only do we get this one, but we get our first one. Uh, you know, we won't have to go through the whole appeal process to have it discharged, to have it forgiven. Uh, because if they were found us ineligible now, we'd be uh, ineligible for forgiveness. So, hmm. well, congratulations. That's always great to hear, man. That's great. I was going to ask you really quick. I saw your post today about uh, you know where we're standing in cannabis in Vermont, the CCC. Call the governor. Call the governor. Everybody call the governor. We're putting a hardcore press. We're just going to keep his phone ringing nonstop until he points the damn board. <laughs> be polite, be friendly, but be firm. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, guys, you heard that from Timmy. We have, we shared to our page, call the governor, make some noise, get out there, be provocative, uh, and let's and let's get this going, guys. Because, again, we're, right now we're the ones losing out on this, on this incredible opportunity. Because I mean, again, if they get this set up before the uh, the corporate time frame gets set up, we're we're gonna run right into that. So, because you had their kind of control point uh, board appointed the day after the legislation passed, it's been almost six months now. <laughs> let's get going. <laughs> yep. No, let's do this. I mean, I mean, I, I, understandably, we have COVID. Everybody's working from home. We get it. We get it. We get it. But. Right now, I think we, we should be adjusted to it to be able to handle what we got going on. Everybody's still there. You know what I mean? We haven't lost anybody. It's not like we have half sessions or, or people just aren't showing up. We, they're, they're still available. We got to get it done. Governor needs to pick three names out of 10. Doesn't require much. We're, we're not talking about a huge uh, process here. 10 names, one, two, three, done. All right, let's do it. All right, come on. Yeah, easy. <laughs> not quite right. that easy, but, uh, you know, we've, we've had enough time. As, as we know, he wasn't very, uh, you know, cooperative in signing the bill he you know this is a, uh, a no pass bill so it'll be interesting to see how much longer he drags his feet so hopefully we'll get this passed but again let's be squeaky let's be that squeaky grease in the wheels let's make uh some noise and let's holla at people and make sure you tune in every morning to the green nurse 8 a.m sherry right yes 8 a.m your daily dose of afa which is <laughs> all absolutely fucking amazing exactly yeah. beautiful <laughs> Let's smoke some weed and it gets even better. All right, guys, that's Pretty it. That's all we got. Next week, week, next week we have the Weed Mom book author. She she's written a book. This is gonna be great. I can't wait to talk to her uh, because this is one of the big things that we talk about a lot with cannabis is the stigmas with parents, right? Parents and kids. So um, this is gonna be a really unique aspect, and, and hopefully everybody can tune in for that. Um, and that's Dan uh, Danielle Simon Brand Lenard, right? Um, so will be a great conversation and then on the seventh guys we have the legendary 
Danny Danko. So we're going to get to Danny Danko on. Uh, if you guys don't know who Danny right. Danko are, then you don't really know cannabis. Um, no offense, but check it out. <laughs> Google his name. Um, high Times writer for, for generations, right? Uh, right now, he uh, has a great project going called Northeast Leaf Magazine, uh, which he's a contributing editor. He's doing a lot of stuff there. So great project there, guys. He's also got another show, um, Grow Your Own, They're a huge podcast that he's doing some great stuff. He's got some great guests there. So he'll be on. He'll be talking to us about a lot of great things. And uh, that's it, guys. That's all we got. So check us out next week. It's going to be another great one. Thank you, guys. This is In the Weeds. We are out. We're signing off. And make sure you tune into the Green Nurse tonight. And uh, we'll see what what's going on in Hawaii. I can't wait. Sherry and Jeff. See you guys next week. We'll talk to you guys later. And congratulations to Sherry and Jeff for winning the book. It was great. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> it's off. <laughs> this, is, this is why we're on podcast, baby. 